everyone. Oh, wow. And welcome to a very glitchy uh, episode of Airstreamers where you never know what Matrix will be writing in. <laughs> I'm fine. Did you have your Wheaties today? What is going on with my camera? <sighs> oh, wow. It's mad. Big mad. Wow. That is terrible. What is going on? Should I activate, deactivate? Oh, wait. Did I fix it? I think you fixed it. Maybe. Maybe activate not. deactivate <laughs> anyway welcome folks you're gonna get a glitchy version of me tonight and that's what you get and you don't get upset um thank you wendy first off for subscribing for 15 months holy mcmoley oh thank you wendy and um <laughs> yeah we're on time chrissy but also glitched i don't know i don't know what's going on that's like seizure inducing hang on just one second folks i'm gonna just, just tighten it and then do this, and then can you plug me back in? Yeah. And then hit deact activate, deactivate. Let's see. Did I do anything? Oh, no. Look at Bernie. No, it's gone. Bernie looks like a little monster in there. The It's like the gremlin under your bed. No. We're... we're Big man McPlant. We're screwed. Okay, maybe I mean I'm don't don't, don't even look touch at it. it. Don't look at it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I think it's fine. That was a fuzz that I Oh my god, look at uh oh, look at him. Do you see him back there? Cheddar? Yeah. It could be that it's uh the cable on the other side. Okay. Do you want to do it? Oh, I don't know where that cable goes. Okay. Let's well, see. Well we'll we'll keep it here Hopefully until it'll... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wendy, you got your tote bag already? Thank you, Postal Service. I mean, listen, where else can you go and spend $4 and have them deliver a tote bag in a couple days? The po Anywhere other than the post office? Yeah. No, you'll go you, you go to UPS and yeah. it's going to be a million dollars. I $20, $20 minimum. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's what I think. Oh, look at Tater Tot. Tater Tot's feeling so much better. Elias, I'm going to see if I can. Yeah, that's. <clears throat> and it's nearly unbearable. Okay. Uh, must be warm in the broadcast room, said Pink NS. So we both went for a run earlier. That was a 35 ish minute oh, run. And um, it was a very cool thing. We've done it. We did it with Apple Fitness Plus outside with our Apple Watches and our headsets. And uh, it's very cool. You run in a city. Like Austin, which was what we did, mainly for the playlist. And as you're running, they like tap your wrist and they're like, oh, now we're passing this special place. And now we're passing this special place um, and so on and so forth. And it's very, very cool. And you just glance on at your watch and you see a little picture and it just distracts you for a second. And the whole point of when you exercise, at least for me, is to distract your mind from the fact that you are exercising because otherwise it's absolutely miserable. Um so that's what we were doing, and therefore, and we immediately, then I had to shower, immediately went to pick up some food, immediately went to pick up some wine. Um, nothing, you never unplugged anything. No, I know, but is it, like, less madness? Maybe. Um, and therefore, I'm, like, burning. Like, I'm, I'm just overall hot, and I don't think that I'm going to, I would last if I had to sit up here. Um, Chrissy asked, why is Elias's cam always the drama, honey? Try it. You know it. Activate, deactivate. Let's see. Did we fix it? No, we didn't fix it. It's literally broken. Uh, some sort of perhaps raisin in the Nintendo. I don't even know what that means. Um, Eloise is messing with your cams because she was banished, said Patsy. That would be amazing. Too shy for you said happy Pride Month and happy Pride Month to you and everybody. Lots to talk about with that, too. Um, I had quite an experience today. Um, thanks. And I got my tote bag. Love it, Wendy. I'm so happy that you got it. And uh, thank Leah, really. She's the one who, who spearheaded all of that. Double tank tonight. You know it. Seizure warning indeed. It's real rough. Maybe a. I mean, I'm going to do it on the fly cable change. Is that yeah, do it. Do it. I got you, Chris. Do it. We can we can do it. Cheddar going to town. I know. The best tote bag ever, said Wendy. Um, you can definitely fit like a solid cantaloupe in there. <laughs> I would say. Maybe like if you if you squeezed a can no, a cantaloupe and a couple of uh apples, I would say. And a jar of uh salmonella and a jar of salmonella peanut butter. Also, you know, you know when uh, Chris, we go apple picking, we pick like the. Use my camera if you want. 
No, it's fine. You know when you when we go apple picking and we do the quarter bag or whatever the size that would happen um while um Apple picking. I feel like I'm watching you all in the 1900s old big box VCR TV. LOL said Lana. Lana, wherever you were, um, I all of your food. That was that was what's up. I mean, it really was delish every step of the way. Um, I wanted everything that you had. I think Chris just fixed it on the fly live. Oh no, you didn't. No, no, no. It's my camera. I think it's my camera. Or maybe it's the carpet. I don't know, but I'm over it, Chris. It's fine. Um, Jay Grizz 11 said, all these rainbow uh, rainbow flags. Chris, I drove by that house that is on that block up there that we've seen with yeah. the pride flags. No, it, wait, I think it's good now. I Well, it's better for sure. But it vomited uh, pride, and I'm living I love it. Did you see it? Have no, you I haven't. It? No, I don't leave the house a lot. I'm the the window, and I'm so happy Lana's back. And I also, I'm a couple things because you know, I'm just a little fly in the wall fixing cables while you're entertaining the folks. Lana, I'm really happy you're back. But I will echo what Elias said that all of her stories were fantastic looking. You know, when you say "but," it kind of implies the opposite. Did I say "but"? Mm-hmm. And I got nervous. I was like, what are you going to yell at Lana for? Oh, I never... actually thought what you were going to yell at Lana for was for the McPlant failure. No. She'll she'll come through. Okay. I know she will. I think what Lana should do is buy a lot of them and freeze dry them and ship them to us. Ew. Freeze dry them? I don't know. Whatever. And like... then, oh, I can't move because I think it get, makes your camera mad. <laughs> it's your, oh, you're the drama? I think so. Look. No. No. I think it's just being very finicky. Or a personal size watermelon. I am dead. Bernie's glowing eyes are the best. Yeah, look at them. We have a little light pointing at him, which isn't really doing much of anything. And all it's doing right now is... Um, is he loves that little box. Reflection. Whenever I go upstairs, um, uh, he's Helen, always hanging out in there. Salmonella peanut butter is, in fact, what you heard. What that was was the, the, the sal salmonella peanut butter that... Um, uh, what was it? Jif. The recall on the GIF recently that happened. That and, we found uh, out about after I ate a whole jar of it, but yeah. I was fine. It was yeah. good. It was still, it, listen, don't eat salmonella, but it, it still tasted fine. <laughs> That's the chance. So you go to India and you give away tote bags. So what happened was the night that Leah came over to stream with us, episode, uh, what, like 193, I think, um, she surprised us and brought three tote bags that we're going to sequentially give away um, with different colored Airstreamer logos and a decal of it that we can put on whatever we want and the pajamas that she bought that were matching pajamas with uh, the logo that she put on the on the breast, the breast this is. Um, my sister was visiting me in Dallas. I've never eaten so much. Ah, that is not a complaint I would have. That means you're doing it right. Yes, Chrissy, do you know that I... I Lana and I her sister are just the cutest together. The, literal, the, the cutest. Um, Wait, did you thank Wendy and um, I Shelly? I thanked Wendy. I did not thank Shelly thank or Shelly his and daughter. Lena, thank you for the community sub. Super sweet of you. Are, oh. you. are you flickering again? It was bad for a second, yeah. Oh, Bernie... Uh, so I, I don't have the picture. What I was going to say is I, as I was driving, I took my phone out and did the whole like press on the camera button and just pointed it to take the picture as I was just driving and, uh, which I don't recommend you do, but, uh, um, <laughs> is Bernie taking your Amiibo on the ceiling cat cam? I just see the paw come out and he just snatches it. That's really funny. <laughs> And uh, we, um, I missed it. I didn't get a chance to do it. But when next time I drive by, I will definitely take a picture and post because it's really adorable. The window sills or the windows themselves have like draped pride flags at the bottom. The roof part has draped pride flags. Big, huge like material of pride flag. Uh, the do they the, have bunting? The mm -mm. No I don't bunting. think there's any specific pride bunting, but there is uh, a pride progressive pride flag that is huge. They're always really good. I love. I want to knock on their door and just say thank I you want because to you're as doing well. you're doing the the hard work. They live on the they, main road. They live on the main road. They um had signs out for stop Asian hate. They had Black Lives Matter signs out. Like they were doing doing work. Black Lives Matter. That was interesting. 
Black Lives Matter. I would. I I want the emphasis on lives. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, thank Should you. I plug the camera into a different outlet? Maybe. I, I mean, I just feel like it's so distracting. I know. I feel bad. I don't know what to do. I, I, but I want to just thank these folks who are supporting this hype train that's happening right now, and um, I'm all here for it. Um, Lana says, "Thank you." Truly, though, you are absolutely adorable. Um, camera is good now, Lice Mazi. I blame you. I'm just kidding. I absolutely do not blame you. Jif, yes, I was talking to my parents about it. They didn't even try to get a coupon for a new jar. Creamy, it was creamy peanut butter, Sandy Cat. Um, Kitty Sand, Jif, I missed it as well. Um, and I was in the midst of doing a crazy experiment on, um, on live for muskrat meals, which was uh, pickles and peanut butter and toast. And all of the folks on mus on uh, muskrat meals just lost their minds and was like, absolutely do not eat. Not only that, because that's disgusting. I think this is better, Chris. But also because the GIF is expired. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I actually wasn't that way. I was real bad. I think it's good, Chris. Chris was like, yeah, whatever. I've been having it all week, which is absolute insanity. Um, hi, adventurous. Uh, I need my hello, too. That's so cute. I'm Lana. Oh, thank you. She's my best friend and is a real bad bitch. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Sia's daughter. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Kathy. My decal arrived today. Thank you both. So and it's Leah. a bad USB port? That's so weird. Leslie, I'm so happy that you got it and that it arrived. Uh, Bernie is a Nintendo fan. Hi from O. Oh, oh, I'm going to pronounce that wrong. From Scour K. Mm, nope. I don't even want to try it. Wait, where? I'm... Uh, o A X A C A. O A S H O A S H A K A. O A S H A K A. O A O A K A. O A S H A K A. No, Oaxaca. 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 I'm tuning in for my Mexican vacation. That is so cute. Thank you, Cooking Sherry. I'm jealous of you and your Mexican Aww, vacation. Scare K. That's super sweet. Um. Yeah, Chris. Did you right? catch up on everybody who supported us? I'm going. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sia's daughter. That is so sweet. And um, I'm just going through the list. So I'm going to do some other things in between. Thank you, Wendy. Got to pay for that postage. <laughs> oh, that is sweet. <laughs> it's all okay. We appreciate it, but thank you. We love doing it. Um, Jen said, if you knock on the door, you have to say hi, gay, and walk away like the video going around. That video, by the way, started last year, and it is one of my absolute favorite things on the whole entire planet. It's oh, the, is it the woman who's doing the fake advertisement yeah, for Pride? Yeah, for her, for for her the, like small time like I, uh, butter shop or something, and she's yeah. like, for, you could tell, the joke of it is that the corporations are like forced, ooh, now Bernie is weird. What? I don't know. Okay, whatever. Um, the corporations, you know what rainbow cap, uh, rainbow capitalism? Yeah, what that is? Um, no. I, there's two schools of thought. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you through a little bit of a journey here with uh, with with support for the LGBTQ community. On one hand, um, you have the support of people who are like, oh, you know, Jif has rainbow peanut butter. I'm so happy. I'm going to buy that peanut butter and I'm so happy they support um, the community. On the other hand, it's people are taking advantage of people wanting to support the community and doing this to put more dollars in their pockets. I saw then, um, a side by side of uh, uh, like Vaseline lip, lip balm, like the little mm -hmm. capsule of it that you put on like yeah. the your finger, which I never get that. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you do that? That's just asking for germs mm -hmm. like you're literally <laughs> dipping it in and then you're like mm, and then dipping and no terrible it's a my camera's flickering anyway keep going so then they had the standard branding which mm. was 99p like in it was in the uk i guess and then it was and then there was the pride one for a pound 25 or mm -hmm. pound 29 and it was the same quantity right. and it was like you're they're doing it because they know people will buy that one uh, yeah just to walk around so the the reason why Look, i'm not complaining because like i like the stuff and i it, i don't know it makes me happy that 
people support it. Right, but here's so I, here's where we'll, the argument comes in. We will buy things and if we're buying things that have a rainbow on it, I'm fine with it. But that's here's, capitalism. Here's where it comes into play with how you need to just be a bit aware and careful. There are corporations like AT&T as an example, who is pride, yay, rainbows everywhere, but then actively are donating money towards anti-LGBTQ organizations. And that's where things get complicated. It's not the majority of folks that will do that, that, that are doing that, but you can tell there are you know people who are taking advantage of this. I'm conflicted because on one hand to even think that oh, when well, I was good younger, thing we have Verizon. I know it's the first thing I thought of. I was like, thank God. Um, <laughs> the first thing I thought, I don't of, know if Verizon's any better though, but I think that they are legitimately. I don't think they're in the hot seat. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. That makes me, when I was younger, if I walked into a store and I was with my mom, I used to shop all the time with my mom. I mean, how gay can I get? Um, if I walked into a store and I saw a whole lot of gay pride stuff, I would ask a question. I don't know how that would go with my mom, but the fact that it is existing for the world to see is part of representation, which is part of what I'm very passionate about in regards to helping grow the community, just be out. Like my whole tattoo, which by the way, I didn't wear like a short sleeve to show this tonight, but the whole point of my MO is to just be myself authentically to just have other people be okay with themselves. Even if it's one person in the whole world that I affect, that's still more than nothing. And so for me, it's like on one hand, it's such a wonderful thing. I will, I, I give it that. But then on the other hand, I do also understand the sort of other side of it. I just think representation as a whole at the moment is probably more important, I would say, than, yeah. than anything else that can be found out in the bellies of the beast. Yeah. You know? So that's oh, that. 40 seconds left and we're just at the completion of level three. And we have so many folks to thank for supporting the channel. I um I want to tell you, you mentioned shopping with your mom and how uh how that could be perceived as gay. As a kid, I don't know that I've told this story on the stream, but I also went shopping with my mom. And I used to love going and hiding in the little coat rack things. Mm -hmm. I think we all did as gays, as children, but I think predominantly as gays. It, because it gave us more opportunities to come out. It was like mm -hmm. we would, I would go in the little circular coat rack things, which do they even have them anymore? I don't, I don't think they do. Th they do. I've seen it. Helen said I almost gagged with you eating the pickles and peanut butter, LOL. <laughs> um, but rainbow I would, washing, said Queen Wolf. Um, that is a thing. Yes. That's the, I think that's the, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Chris. That's the general big picture. I think when you rainbow wash, you're like, uh, it's like pink washing with the, um, breast uh breast cancer awareness yeah and how everything becomes that that's what rainbow washing is and again i just it's confusing to me because it's like representation matters and i think the difference with rainbow washing is that at the end of the day the thing you're representing is so much more about a group rather than an organization. I think with pink washing, isn't it very specifically that I think one? it's the Susan G. Coleman yeah. Foundation. And I mean, breast cancer awareness is fantastic. I yeah. mean, that, that should certainly be a thing. Um, but I think that there are some concerns about the, the Susan, the, like, the, the organization. Yeah. I think that they're, they're not using the funds like they present. They're yeah. using them. Um, can so, you tell us about your circular? <laughs> yeah, I would go and hide in these things. And this was a regular occurrence. I think my childhood predated the leash, the leashing system that sometimes parents use. Can I tell you? I, I need to tell you something. I never that. had a leash, I tell you. but I probably should have. What? Tell me. I think that I even meant to talk or showed. I don't know. Remind me if I've said this before. Very recently... I was somewhere and I was sitting in the car trying to get, I haven't seen many leashes on kids recently. Okay. Just listen. I've been sitting, I was sitting in my car at a local Dunkin Donuts where I work, just trying to decompress during my lunch. Just, I needed my coffee. I needed my English muffin and I just wanted to just, you know, forget the world because the world sucks sometimes. And I'm about to eat my English muffin and it's like the perfect temperature. It wasn't too hot, not too cold. 
Like when it's too hot, I feel like I'm going to burn I'm myself. I'm surprised you got an English muffin. Why? Well, a mac and cheese on an English muffin. And the I'm reason very I did it is because the bagels that when that, was this two weeks ago? The bagels at Dunkin' Donuts are why very, are you hiding things from me? <laughs> <laughs> it's the bagels. You know that I don't like bagels that are hard. Because I know they hurt my jaw. I know, but an English muffin is very surprising to me. What's the other option? A biscuit. A biscuit. What a is biscuit. that? A what biscuit. Do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> we that's another podcast or another show Chris. <laughs> I was sitting there trying to anything. Eat. I'm just very surprised. And then I see a pair of women who were probably let's say like 30, which means they were fairly young in the grand scheme of like childcare. Um and the the front woman was holding on to a rope, uh, like a like a leash, let's say. The back woman was holding on to the end of that other leash. And connected to that leash, like hopscotch style, was kid one to the leash, kid two to the leash, kid three to the leash, kid four to... Ten kids all connected to one central leash. Wait, like, uh, no, this is like dog sledding? Yes, but... Were they pulling the woman or were no, she... No, 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 no. I'm not describing it right. Chris, think of your bones. Think of your back, right? You have, like, your back your spine and then yeah. the ribs that come out. Yeah. Each rib was a kid. That's how it was. So the central leash like this. Oh, that's then, like a dog walking company. That's what I thought that the, that parents probably like, were they're like, probably taking their from nine to nine 30. We're walking your you kid. You got to take your kid out for a walk so that I they nap. Was, so they nap. That's what it is. That's what they want. I was shook. I was about to bite into my muffin trying to think. Oh, my muffin, well, my, my, my English muffin trying to forget the world. And then I saw that and I <laughs> Steve, nearly I was just gonna exploded. Say that. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to. <laughs> oh, wait. This is this is bonkers to me. I literally thought that child leashing was like come and gone, but now you're telling me that it is I, Chris. It I is will... it is orders of magnitude worse than I thought it was. <laughs> I could have possibly <laughs> thought that it was. I'm telling you, I have a photo of it. I took a photo of it because well, I was show so it on shocked. the stream. No, 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 absolutely not. I want to show off this the kids. This is crazy. But I want to okay, find well, it I and feel show like, you. Look, as you're looking at that, I'm going to say that I probably created this human centipede version of child walking because when I was a kid... I would always go run and hide in the things, come out of the the little circular ring things. And then the one time I was like, well, I've had my fill of these circular clothing hangers. And I, in the corner of my eye, saw the elevator and I was like, ooh, that's something new. I like squares. I Are ran, you for real? I ran into the elevator and just slammed on the buttons. <laughs> I did not know this. <laughs> I, I, rode, I, can't find it. I don't know where I rode the elevator to. Did All, your mom have a heart attack? Oh, I will ask my mom about the time that I rode the elevator because she will go. Oh, off. she will go a W F off. Mm. She so I rode the elevator A-W-F-F, and then F F. Oh, OK. Um, and like imagine this picture like you're just shopping in the mall or whatever and the, the, the elevator doors just open and there's like a five-year-old kid standing there. Like, what, what do you do? So one of the employees found me because I was just riding it up and down. Oh, you were going. Oh, I hit all the buttons. What this store was, was just this? Great. I have no idea. It must have been a Macy's. And then an, uh, an employee found me and was like, oh, God. I don't get paid for this probably, but he was nice. And he was like, Oh, where's your, where's your, where are your parents? And I'm like, Oh, I'm just riding the elevator. Oh my God. <laughs> and Chris. then they took me to the front, like the cashiers. And then you hear <laughs> overhead. They were, they gave me like a lollipop. Someone, from like the yeah, checkout. They're probably trying to make sure you're calm. Yeah. And then, um, my, you're like, you yes, hear, I win. I get a lollipop. <laughs> I know I this is this. exactly, this is the right thing to do. Then um, they page overhead and say, like, if I don't know how they worded it, but they would have they probably thought about it. Like, 
What do you say if you lost your child? Come to the cashier, please. If like, you're missing something that's breathing and about, I don't that, know, three feet tall. Yeah. Come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look around you. And I remember my mom coming and was probably like mortified. Like yeah. I lost my oh, kid. Your mom was she definitely. Was yeah. Oh, that is very fun. Chris, so I have to tell you, I did do that as well. I never went in the elevator because I think I'm unusually, this is different for us. I was very attached to my mom to the point where I think if I were separated from her like that, I would have, that would have been a panic, a panic attack moment for me. Like if I yeah. willingly was like, yo, go, I'm, I'm, I've separated from my mom. Bye mom. <laughs> At like five, like, I would have been like, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm finally free. <laughs> Let's catch up on some of these comments. Um, we have some comments. Oh, we completed the hype train, and we there's did. so many folks to thank. Uh, Paul, there is no GIF with rainbow on it that I know of. I just used that as an as a, an example because I was just talking about it. Um, I think both is true, and this is the most important thing, that as long as the company is supporting LGBTQ charities or uh, – actually, you know what? Um, do you follow um, Cal from Cycle on – Yes. Did yeah. you see a story? Yeah, I did. So in one of our fellow coworker uh, uh cycle person's story. Oh, hey, funny Caro. Funny Caro one. Hello. Um, what they were saying was that we need to take this as representation and that big companies um, typically are, because they're divided ac across groups and stuff, there may be a portion of the organization that is directly working towards making things a bit better and that maybe they're in the in-between stages, who knows, but the fact that they're working towards something better is really what's the most important part yeah. of all of this, yeah. you know? Um, so, I think else? also what his, um, what his thing meant, what Cal's uh, post commented on is that a lot of companies have these like um employee resource groups or ergs yeah. that um establish a presence in in corporate culture um for uh lgbt support and that's typically coming from somebody who's just being vocal yeah, within the employee said, base the to creating grassroots uh, organization yeah. within the company. That's very yeah. important. I mean, we have like at my company, we have those ERGs um, that are specific, f like for different things. Yeah. They have like uh, uh, women lead who like. What does the ERG stand for? <clears throat> employee resource group. Isn't the diversity and inclusion, diversity, inclusion, and something. That that is a the, a big new job mm. that exists, and I forgot the other name of it. But the point of them is to like make sure that the company is uh, is. I mean, diversity, inclusion, and community. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was neat, but anyway, we'll talk about it. Yeah, but, Home Depot is is not is a bad one. Lowe's is a much better one. Um. So Heidi, that's that was Heidi earlier. Oh my God, we have so many comments. Oh, I missed it all. Um. Wait, I wanted to also say that uh i completely lost it but because i'm focused now on going to get a a shot was it the celebrate. podcast no i just want to make a quick psa we have made some adjustments to our podcast in the sense that this means nothing mm. to you but on the back end we have changed a lot of how our podcast will be distributed which now will officially make the podcast available on basically anywhere you get your podcast specifically google podcasts and um one more that i'm thinking of i think iHeartRadio. they will take a little longer to get because they just have to approve it but the point is that there was a little bit of a mistake in the in the latest podcast upload and as i was listening today which we had awesome feedback for, by the way. If you've listened, thank you. But at the very end, there's like two or three minutes cut off. So like the just the like goodbye is like missing. Just FYI, in case that you read that or hear that, I need to go back and just make an adjustment on that. But if that happened to you and you wondered what happened to my app, it's actually us. We made the mistake on that or at least somewhere along the way. It's it so weird mistake. that when we, well, so now we're like paying for the podcast service. Yeah. And, but now it shows up almost instantaneously on all of the yeah, services. It's so much, so much better. It's so much, all I need to do, not that you care, but I, it's one upload for me on my end. I upload, I hit go and it bo go, go, goes psh, and it goes everywhere all at the same time. So, but listen, folks, thank you for all the support um, because that support helps us, you know, pay for 
the of course podcast yeah um, subs and all that stuff it's really awesome and and this is like a uh, a really awesome upgrade that we got um on our end so thank you thank you thank you and that just means more content for you to be bored out of your minds by um <laughs> lana said this is terrible i like walmart who was selling uh it's like walmart who was selling juneteenth ice cream juneteenth ice cream but they are anti everything i mean that's just advantage taking yeah that's that's absolutely terrible didn't Hi, they do back. something ridiculous like give their employees like something for juneteenth that was really not good i can't even i don't even want to know i the think they that. yeah i think it was absurd i don't know if i'm making that up or not but um greenwashing is another one that happens when you do i'm assuming night viper saying all like the environmental like um oh yeah like yeah. organic mm -hmm. and this and the other thing can you um thank Jeez folks for the oh you're really behind elias yeah i, I, I want to make sure gonna... i know i know i should probably jump ahead but is yeah there but i think you should start thanking folks yes. and then i'll go get the the shot to yes, celebrate i will do that yes and it was like a dog walker it was probably a daycare that's how they keep track of them said tamis um i chris i really you need to remind me to show you that photo i need to find it i'm doing a quick little looky loo i hope i didn't miss anything up the leash has uh, been upgraded um okay folks so first off really thank you this is we have so much going on here um and i just want to go i'm gonna start from over here see his daughter thank you kathy wendy jay grizz um kathy cooking sherry thank you 500 bits kathy with 100 bits wendy with 100 bits jay grizz with 14 bits see his daughter 301 bits thank you pink ns 100 J Grizz 15, Pink NS 100, Doggy Pack 100, Too Shy For You, Leslie, Sia's Daughter with 600 bits, J Grizz, thank you, Pink NS with 100, J Grizz with 100, Sia's Daughter with 400, Holy McMoley, Patsy with 500, Pink NS 100, Leslie with 100, and then just outside the hype train, Sam and Watson is a 15 month subscriber resubscribed for 15 months and i hope that i got everyone i think that i did um but really 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 truly thank you for the endless support um that you provide our channel us and everything that we do here it's remarkable we thank you from the bottoms of our hearts um and chris and i, I folks i just want you all to be prepared I am so excited to share my uh, highlight reel today. I can't even tell you. I'm excited. You are. You told me it's really good. Yeah, I think this is this is award winning. I think this is an award winning one. If I don't say so myself. I mean, I'm, I trust I'm gonna be your like judgment. the the eyeliner woman with the choker. Yeah, I did it myself. Oh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Who does you, you have very bold eye makeup all the time. Do you have someone to do it for you? No, I actually did it myself. Chris, I mean, you um, are an actor. <laughs> I am blown away by what you just performed here. Uh, that no. is a cardboard box in the muskrat cam. It's actually a, it's a, it's, it's supposed to be a Game Boy, but they, um, they, they didn't send the right side of it. It's really a hot mess. It's a hot mess, but, but Bernie loves it. Because, yeah, Eloise has shifted gears. She wants to be elsewhere. Uh, oh, yes, Poulet Mi cro cr Croquette uh, is my what new favorite. Oh, it's a whole thing on Discord that was happening. It's so freaking funny. There's so much to catch up on. We have to talk about Camp Muskrat, but let's celebrate first with... All of the support. Oh, Kathy Redeem, get a muskrat. Get Eloise. We, El Kathy wants Eloise up here. So oh, at some think, point, we'll okay. go do that. I'll, when I'll, when we finish the shots, I'll go get yeah. her. Okay. Um, can you kick off the... Yes, let's do it. Oh, Chris, good wow. job fixing the... Um, fixing my camera. Maybe. I don't know. Today is... Wood. Today is a Canadian type of day. What does that mean? Look, oh. I got a uh, maple leaf. Um, I forget who sent us these. I think is it, it was Shelly. I, I think, think it, it was Shelly. Cheers, folks. Cheers. Boom. Thank you, everybody, for all of the support. Oh, it's probably um, one of why I broke it the last time. Yeah, don't slam. Thank your you for the endless support. We love you, and we love doing this. We really do. I mean, it's so, so much. much fun. Thank Cheers, you. everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank Cheers. you. <laughs> oh. 
That one's strong. Ooh. Ooh, not a fan, not a fan, not a fan. You didn't finish, Elias. No, I... Chris, you're calling me out. I'm close to finishing. You can do it, Elias. No, I don't want to do it. There's just a little bit. No, no, no. I don't want to do it. You can have it. No, I don't want it. (laughs) Maybe I'll save it for later. Save it, and then you can just surprise us and do a little sippy sip. (laughs) Do you like a... A little sippy sip. A little sippy Um, sip. I'm not going to go into details on this, but I did want to share with what's happening um, in my... So look, I'm gonna just restart. It is wow, Pride my Month. eyes are resetting. Why was that? Was crazy. I saw like those were really dark glasses, and they're not normally that dark. No, something was bouncing off of the top of his thing. It's blinding me. We are in Pride Month, and there, every year has been more and more goodness coming out of Pride Month, and I feel like we, me and Chris, have experienced like pre Pride celebrations to like post now pride celebrations and have seen the growth of it um and there's a lot of really good things that come of it rainbow washing aside like we're not going to talk about that aspect of it but the big thing is the conversations that happen from it and um very cool my my um middle school uh my middle school guidance counselor emailed us and said hey we recommend that you stop and show all of your students this three minute video which describes why we celebrate pride and it's kind of a quick little like this is what pride is this is why we celebrate it. And I just sort of wanted to recap on that in case you all are not familiar with it, but it's takes place in the Stonewall Inn in New York city, which is so cool that it's literally like right here. And we've had us. drinks there. We've had drinks there. It's a great place. I can't believe it's not mobbed all the time. I agree with you. We went in and we were just chilling and sitting there, but we but also went like, in like in the middle of literally the middle of the day. And I forgot why we were there, but we it, took the day off and we went in No, we did something. We went somewhere and whatever it was. But um, in 1969, it was illegal to just be out and about as gay people, like doing whatever. And the Stonewall Inn was like a safe haven for these folks. And so uh, whoever was in the, the inn at that time that this happened, the cops come in. They're trying to just sort of arrest everyone because at this point they're like, oh, this is easy pickings, whatever, we'll do this. Um, And everyone just banded together. And the majority of the folks here are black trans women, essentially. Um, And they're banding together. Yeah, Marsha P. Johnson was in that whole. Yep. And they said, no, not today, Satan. That's basically what had happened. And then (laughs) the cops finally sort of give in and give up and walk away from the situation. The success of that was huge. And therefore that was the birth of pride. And the year later following that in 1970, the celebration on June 28th existed to remind everyone what had taken place the year prior. And then it just sort of escalated from there. And now we are here 53 years later. Right. Gang, Which, gang it up, gang it up, except if you're in Florida. Right. That's the, that's the thing. And that's what the some of the conversation was led, led to that in my, with my students today. But the fact that I get to have that conversation is remarkable. The fact that I have that questions, you're encouraged to have that conversation, yeah, that I'm encouraged and that my students have wonderful questions to ask and that we're all learning and they're wonderful and everyone's wonderful. And then on the flip side of that, and this I'm not going to get into too much detail with because it's just frustrating, but there was a homophobic remark made by another student in another class in another period, and I had to deal with that. And that's just kind of like, oh, my God, like here we are on one one end with this progress being made, and then on the other end, like that's happening, you know? But all of this is wonderful, so Um, I want to miss hearing the cough. (laughs) Is it in the West Village? I think so, right? The yeah, Stonewall it's, Inn. It's um It's in like the Chelsea area. Yeah. It's like fourteenth street ish. Yeah. I think of West Fourteenth Street. Well yeah, the West Village. Yeah. yeah. I think that makes sense. Um it's very nice. Uh it's small, it's quaint, it's really just another little bar. And then the fact that that huge success that took place there is remarkable, you know? Yeah, Paul, Christopher Marsha, Marsha is- P. Johnson is huge. So I will be throwing a lot of random little facts at you throughout the course of the month, um, just to educate anyone who's watching and just to make sure that we are loud and proud and living our lives loud and proud. Um, which I mean, I don't think can we be gay? I think we can. I don't think so. I think we can. No, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, by West 4th. Yeah. (laughs) It's like by uh, Christopher Street. I think it's like really close to there. 
Yeah, Paul. I mean, Christopher Street on the path is a definitely a gay area. Yeah, it's so small, but it's so cute, too. True story. Last June 5th, the day Imposter Steve was born on here, we had been at a St. Pete's Pride event with some friend that uh, that afternoon, and I was relaxing on the couch and nursing my sunburn when Jen yelled from the other room that there was an MK tournament happening with the Muskrat Nation guys. That has been a year. Holy A year cow. to the day, is it? No, a year oh almost to God, the day. Oh, my God. That's Holy awesome. Holy McMoley. We need an Imposter Steve month. That's what we need. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, but that's your little tidbit of things for today. Um, and I want, I really want to show this video. Can I show this video? Okay, fine. Why? What were we going to say? No, I was going to talk about the uh, compound. The okay. Camp but after, but after the video, because we'll all be laughing and then we'll come back. And okay. We'll be- so this video is the night of Nintendo Switch Sports. Now, folks, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background if you do not remember this night. We moved our stuff. Uh, I'm, I don't know why I said that. We set up the the Airstreamers stuff, like or the Airstream stuff, the, the second set of stuff we have, downstairs in our living room, and we played Nintendo Switch Sports. Lots of lo- loud things happened, and then afterwards, Raisin had some sort of episode and I think he got real he, upset. He was in a fugue state. He was in a fugue state because he got real upset with the fact that all of the loud banging was going on upstairs. He wanted right to above play him. and he wasn't allowed and he was pissed. And he was peed. And he was like a, mad at Bentley. He was mad at Bernie. He was mad at Cheddar. All sorts of things were going on. Um, so that's that night. And the the video, the, this sort of recap is just all of the, the sort of yelling that went on. And it's just a ton of fun. So please. Stay tuned for uh, four-ish minutes of what I consider to be some of my best work. Um, not to toot my own horn or anything. I don't do No, that. hashtag modest. Mm, totally modest. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. The only thing I will say is our audio is real weird on this because we were using another mic that we didn't have planned. And I might have to raise and lower the volume at times. I don't know. And just be aware if you're wearing ear holes, ear things, don't bust your eardrum. Okay, let's do it. This was previously recorded, uh, episode 181. See you in four minutes. No! Yeah! Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> yep. Take the walk of shame all the way to Losersville. Yes, Heidi is on. My boyfriend is there. Jen Brambilla asked for muskrat love. Yes, this is the ultimate muskrat. Oh my God, look at Bentley. Look at our ridiculous setup here with our picnic table. Someone asked me if I'm gay. Where's my clip? How do I even clip? I don't even know how to do that anymore. Whoa. Oh, wonky, no, no. Yeah, that was a drop shot. Uh, at any point, the, the okay. I'm ready. I don't need lessons. Look, this one. Oh crap! I dropped it. Does that count? <gasps> oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna go whole hog on this one. Yeah. Why were you so far away from the pins? I think this is sabotage. I help him. It's sabotage. I don't help him. It's sabotage. Oh come on. Oh, 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 a turkey! It is a turkey! Look, there's three hands here. Wait, nope. Four hands. Nope. Five oh, hands. Oh, six hands. Oh, snap. Seven hands. Oh. Ah! Did I win? Did I win again? <laughs> I didn't even drink anything. I thought it was better, but it's almost worse. I don't know. Well, like Holy McMoley, Holy McHunt. <laughs> no, don't say that. Wait, what? <laughs> Don't say that. I, I won't now because you're freaking me out. No, his name was Mike Hunt. and his last name was Hunt. Someone oh, you're said saying Mick Hunt. We say Mick Moley, Mick Hunt. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, okay, I got it. I thought you were just <laughs> oh going in whole hog. All right, you have to tell me how to do this. <sighs> do I tell you or do I but not? not a lot. Oh, oh my God. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god! Oh, you're not aggressive enough. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. oh I got you! Oh, I got you! Yeah, a 
Elias, less lecturing, more fighting. No! Yeah! No! Take that, Elias. Mare Mare said that my trash talk was less intense than Elias's, and that she followed it up with the quote, Yeah, take that, Elias. <laughs> take that, Elias. Thank you, folks, and uh, we appreciate this is a every single one of you. Low tide and a quarter. Do it. And then, oh, no, you need to finish that. Uh, <laughs> there it is, I tried. Here we go, volleyball. Rookie Sabian and rookie girl Kyla. Oh, they're gonna go down. Oh, mother, father. They're gonna go down. I'm gonna make them my children. I, oh, that's creepy. <laughs> but, but yeah, we're gonna make them our children. <laughs> oh, whoa! Oh, whoa! Oh, oh. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, Did you see that? Did job. you see that? I mean, I'm not even supposed to be working out. I'm gonna okay. pop a stitch. Shoot. Yeah! yeah. Like Good job, Chris. Rookie Kyla. Oh! oh. We won! What a way to win! Chest bump, ready? And. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, they're aggressive. They're really good. Hardcore. Oh, I got facial hair. Look at you, Eloise. I think we worked really well on that one. Look at this fluff. Oh my God, Eloise. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode on Tuesday. Bye folks. Bye see everyone. Ya. Oh wait, I don't even know where to, how do I do it? <laughs> how do I end it? <laughs> I don't know how to end it. <laughs> this one? You had I one job, one. Elias. Okay, bye, you see ya. <laughs>
You did Listen, the job. The community always delivers. There's no say, question. I can't say who did them because the the app doesn't the, the app the website doesn't show me. It just says clips of your channel, um, and I just download, download, download. But I want to say there was at least maybe 15 clips that were you. Like you all did that, and even named them at some point. Mary Jean Pink NS, you are always on top of that and when you show i always the, see them come in and mary oh, i know she's really good it's at the it. best and it helps me a ton because then i just download those moments and i don't have to scrub through the whole episode to put those together so really thank you that was great um eloise is a perfect little hot mess absolutely can i show my patch now well no the sam what we're saying is the we polydactyl we know means multiple toes, but her bones are growing multiple, like outside of the norm. So like some of her. Yeah, she doesn't like have toes, any extra digits, Yeah, which is what polydactyl. They have extra digits. She doesn't have any. No. She just has chunky digits mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. her fat bones. Exactly. So and if you look at look the like x-ray of them, they're like all over the place. Yeah. I feel so bad for her, but I think she's managing. I, where I think we're no, helping she's totally her. happy. I mean, loves life. She, she, yeah. Except for when she's, when it's like. Winter. Listen, we have a motley crew with this set of cats. I know. Between her going to the vet, I mean, we're keeping the vet in business. Yeah, her I going would, to the vet. I would never change it for the world. Oh no, never. Absolutely not. Even with Tater. This Todd's is what group. we signed up for. His party. What'd you call it? Party. His party popper, popper butthole. butthole. No party popper butthole no we got to do better party popper poop pipe poop pipe. <laughs> that's disgusting <laughs> that is just rancid yeah someone did redeem i uh, got a muscard earlier <laughs> i will go do that as chris tells you more about what you wanted to talk about we have we have quizzes to do we have way. quizzes three quizzes we that have are, a that patch to show a medium hard i want to talk about camp muskrat uh, let me just prepare everyone so that you can do some last minute like crunch studying um, the googlies, the googlies, which by the way, not that I think anyone's doing this, but I was thinking of it while the quizzes are going to go on. Um, the mobile users typically hear it or see it a little later than the mobile, the desktop users as a whole, let's all take the honor system and not like googly as you're, they can't googly now. though, because they're, there's a timer. Yeah. But I'm hearing, I'm speaking it so that it keeps it engaging. So I'm speaking it, and then it's probably going into their ear holes sooner than no, because the screen is the same delay. Otherwise, you would be off. When you show the image, it's. I think they, they get it, it a little later. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. Yeah, I think I'm right too. Okay. Anyway, books. listen. Stick to the editing <laughs> of the like recorded content. Yes, books is easy. What is this, Chris? Missed. History, history is medium and TV is hard. Now I did a little looky loo in each of them as I made them. Cause I, it just pre-populates and I didn't look at all of them. So if there's a weird question, I apologize in advance. Um, I did see one question about JK Rowling and I made sure to delete it because that's unacceptable. Um, and they kind of are a little bit tough. I'm going to say, so that's what you get. I'm going to go get an Eloise uh, speaking of, and uh, come right back as Chris tells you a little bit more about uh, Camp Muskrat. Is yeah, I'll it? start okay. on Camp Muskrat. I'll be back in a sec. Oh, Tamis, see, like, it's super sad, but the fact that you say you wouldn't change it for the world uh... is really important. I mean, the an these animals are reliant on us, and so having awesome pet owners like you is, is super important. Um, so... On that note, I'm going to change gears a little bit and talk about what we did on Wednesday. So we were originally going to stream on Wednesday when we got home, but we ended up not getting home until like 1030, almost 11. And we both had work early in the morning on, on Thursday. Um, it was such a perfect day. We got up. I had, oh my God, stop it. You asked for an Eloise? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Eloise. Oh, my God. Can you put her on top of Bernie? Oh, my God. She's going to just stay there. 
I'm dead. This is perfect. <laughs> Who redeemed this? Mayor Mayor? I don't know, but I'm dead. She's going to just say Oh, there. no. Kathy. Kathy Elizabeth. Uh, Look at Bernie. <laughs> Kathy, for all the support, I feel like this is a worthwhile spend of your Bambi points for get a muskrat because there's no topping this getting a muskrat. This is a whole. I'm going to try to move the camera up a little bit so we can see her. Oh yeah. my god, that's there perfect. We go. <laughs> oh that wow. That is so funny. She's just gonna stay there. The queen has arrived. Which speaking of, the queen didn't go to her jubilee. I don't think she's well. I'm not, I'm, I don't mean to be downer about that, but I don't think she's well. Yeah, she's tired. She's 96. She had some discomfort. Yeah. She stayed home. Exactly. Isn't the Jubilee a literal party that the whole UK does for her? Yeah. And that's it's some, like you have some clout if you can show exactly. if you can be like <laughs> I've got some discomfort. Oh, I feel a little a little tightness in my thumb or something. She and you stay home. She has done her work. Listen, she can do whatever the f she wants to do and it's fine. I feel like I I don't know. I respect her as a woman in power who has commanded power like she has had a say in all of these things whether or not you agree with the monarchy or not like that's a whole other story and certainly up for discussion but i do want to say that she was thrown into this at a very young age and she has commanded that through throughout her life we really should watch the crown danielle loves that it. Leah a loves true it. story I think that I want to say, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, for anyone who's on, but I want to say the big bullet points are correct. They probably dramatize some parts of it to give an interesting sort of, like, I don't know, directorial story. Yeah. But I think it's pretty accurate. Um, I didn't know she had COVID. Did she? Kara said she had COVID. Kara, by the way, that she place She had COVID that a while ago. I think in, like, February. That place that you're getting married is gorgeous. I meant to comment on that in the Discord earlier. Wait, where? In look, well, look. I'll show you on the Discord, or you can look on the Discord afterwards. But it's very, very, very pretty, and I do love that fireplace. I just wanted to comment on that. Um. So yeah, I w I want to check it out. You can show me afterwards. <laughs> but said, Wolf said I agreed, but it would be so awesome if she was just like, I want my martini in peace. <laughs> that would be so great. That would be something. <laughs> Have I Have you do. seen that? Uh, I don't know if it's a gif or a recording of her cutting a cake. No. What is it? Oh, it's just. It's gold. Does she and it's bear, like, can she even hold the knife up? Um, she puts she it's it's basically this cake knife is massive. Okay. It's a, okay. it's a it's like almost bordering on a sword. And <laughs> she takes it and she puts it in the middle, perfectly in the center, puts it in the middle at like a thirty degree angle. Okay. Puts it in mm -hmm. like and then does a little like push down of it, like a little bit. It gets to maybe like just if it's like a seven layer cake, mm -hmm. it's one layer deep. Okay. And then she walks back and is like, "Oh, she cut it. She did." She's it. like all proud of herself. Yeah. Like you literally did the bare minimum. And then the butler is gonna come in and do like, "Oh, fine. I'll just do the other six layers." Yeah. Jesus. Do you blame her? No, but it's just her expression of. It's a combination of proud and happiness that she has a servant to do the rest of for At her. Ninety six years old. The fact that she's and even getting. I'm up. telling you, it is gold. Okay, it is we a need to make video. sure to watch that later. Post it in the Discord. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, Heidi said it's a sword. With the sword, <laughs> it's a sword. <laughs> The Crown is still a drama show. I doubt the Queen or anyone else is literally repeating conversations that took place. I agree with that, Crymars. There's no way. I, Paul, have I discussed it before? Elizabeth the, is an impressive lady for sure. I don't think I ever heard the story. Of the knife? It's been going around the internet. It's like a, a meme. So maybe Paul saw it on like Reddit or something. Kathy asks, is that tomorrow? What time? What tomorrow? Oh, Ka Ka Kara just messaged this. This is the the place. And that's the fireplace. It's super cute. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Um, I, I'm asking what Kathy is saying is tomorrow. Um, I don't know. But I want to talk about Camp Muskrat. Can we change gears and yes. talk? Because I started and saying how the day was perfect. 
We drove all over New York on Wednesday. We had this mission of things that we needed to accomplish. Because, listen, Camp Muskrat, this area in the Catskills is a literal dead zone when it comes to, to internet. Zero. There's Literally nothing. Zero. No cell phone service. Nothing. The only reason why we knew things would be okay is because the per, the prior owner had uh, connected a cable line, so we knew we could get to the point of getting service. But like at the same time, you don't really know what that's going to be like. Or if the work. cable's good. I mean, yeah, I like know. who knows. I mean, yeah. So, um, we had this yeah, we plan were to to do. Uh, this roundabout thing. I wanted to just see the property before we signed the closing documents to just make sure that everything was okay. Did you so, say Queen Wolf? Thank you, Queen Wolf, for the bits. That happened a bit. That happened after. Oh, Sandra I think Watson's. I missed it. Oh, but thanks. I just saw it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Queen Wolf. Um, so we did this roundabout thing. We went to the property before closing to just check it out and make sure that it's still land that. <laughs> the dirt's still there. It didn't uh, in Captain. No, but like there's stuff on there. Like there in in, in uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. There's that one scene where the whole place that the um, what's her name from the Agatha does Christine? it all. Oh, um, it was Agatha all along. Wanda. Wanda Vision. Wherever she's from, I don't yeah. even know if that's the place. But remember when it lifts? Up she's into from the Full sky? House. No, those are her sisters. Do you remember when the whole land lifts up off the sky, kind of like in Aladdin when the castle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you were concerned about that. I was very yeah. concerned. I was like, I want my land. I want to make sure all of the dirt is there that I'm paying for. And so we drove there just to check it out, just to see. Sarkovia? Yeah, I think that's it. And Heidi is calling you out for spilling coffee on you. Was this before or after? Oh, my God. Yeah. And Discord totally got it. So if you look at the pictures from the day of closing, I had a T-shirt on and driving up. I don't even know how it happened. I just looked down after we took a couple of the pictures and I had just coffee stains all over my shirt like a slob. <laughs> I was like, I can't go to closing like this. I'm, they're not even going to give us the property. But luckily, I'm prepared. And I you had an, were extra, prepared. an extra jacket with me because I was not sure, first of all, if the, my jean jacket would fit with my outfit. And I was nervous about that. But second of all, I was nervous I was going to be too cold. So I brought an extra sweatshirt that happened to be what Chris wore. So then we left, we left um, Camp Muskrat and we drove up. Now, again, this is a really like uh, rural area <laughs> that uh everything like you want to go to the store it's a 30 minute drive like it's just in the middle of nowhere so we were going to the it's not you know that little corner that we found yeah that's like 15 that's like minutes. 15 minutes it's not the end of the world but it's still something yeah you know so we drove up to um the the cable store to get the modem because it was on the way to the the bank for the to sign the closing. We had documents. a lot. We had a lot to do. So we, we did this kind do. of like a loop where we went loopy loop from the property to the cable company to the the bank, and when um, when we got to the cable company, uh, this is a funny like a very it's kind of a funny story. We give all of the information to the to the customer service person, and it was a very quick transaction. It's like boom, boom, boom. In here you out. go. Give me your social. Give me your driver's license. Here's your modem. K, okay, thanks, bye. I was saying to Chris, and actually, Paul, you might remember this just from the way we did things at Apple. But I genuinely felt like she was a type of employee where she knows the end point, and the questions she's asking you are going to basically be the quickest route to get her to the end point. And that's the signs of a good employee. In my mind, that's what everyone should be doing at all times. Boom, 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 get in and out, get in and out, get in and out. So we literally leave the store and Elias is like, that's the type of employee you want in that job. I yep. was like, yeah, no, she was great. She was super fast. It was I didn't awesome. even think she looked up at us. She was just down no. head in the Yeah, she was computer. like, I want these people on my store. Yes, no. Yes, no. No, yes. Yep. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Here you go. So we leave, and then we go to the 
um, to the closing. Closing was super simple. Like it was, it was great. Just it was just like a as normal sign, but no surprises. Yep, nothing. Everything was normal. Our lawyer was just like, "Hey, just so you know, this is blah blah blah," and then was like, "The one from the was, bank was so nice. I want to be friends with her." Oh uh, well, I like know all these people now because I feel like I've just been talking to yeah. all of them for this. It's been like two months, but I want to be friends with her. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, let's make that happen. Yeah, I have her you? number. Okay, good. So, um, so we go finish closing and we're all excited. Um, and then at closing, Elias is like, Hey, uh, so about those keys to the shed and I totally forgot. And then it was like a sudden scramble. Who has the keys to the shed? Who has the keys to the Jeep? Vroom, vroom. Isn't... (laughs) Isn't that a Missy Elliott song? <laughs> okay, I've just jumped out of my skin, and it's I'm in a new multiverse now. This is a new set of Elias and Chris. We are pretending that never happened. Keep going. So the lawyers are like, "Oh, I don't have I I don't have them." Um, and then obviously our lawyer doesn't have them. And then they're calling the agents, trying to figure out. Um, who has the keys and so we're like whatever we'll figure it out like it it like we want to go back to the property after this but we'll figure it out so we weren't super stressed but we did not eat yet that day and it just so happens that near the bank (laughs) there happened to be a taco bell (laughs) There was a Taco Bell, a Burger King, a McDonald's, a Wendy's, and um, KFC. KFC. Yeah. And a Popeyes. Uh-huh. All right there. And you know why I bet? Because there's, this is probably a hub of of like where people come to, and they just want to give them the option. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, so we suffered through Taco Bell because we had service there at least, and we were waiting for the, um, the seller's agent to call us back. We did try a new thing. Not a fan. I mean- what I mean is I will have a hundred of them, but I'm not a fan as much of a fan as others, which was the toasted cheddar chalupa. <laughs> a not lot, a fan. Lana, Natasha. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> not, Lana, Natasha, and uh, Kara, dead. All of this. It's too funny. So we, um, we get the call from Jen. the agent and she says, I have the keys. I'm so sorry. We didn't know the closing was today. Um, we'll just leave them here. Yeah. They were, everybody oh, was, was super sweet. Like everybody was super sweet and we weren't like stressed about it. We we're like, whatever, we'll get them when we get them. It's ours now. We'll break the window if we yeah, need to. I mean, it's a shed. How hard could it be to break into a shed? So are you going to say what Pete said or no? Um, no, I don't know okay. that. I keep don't going. know what that is. Yeah, like, keep going. so, uh, so then we go to the property. Um, Pete, L and Ellie meet us there, which was literally like icing on top. It was so nice to see them the day that like right after we closed and then we got to see Ellie and P and L. It was just awesome. P, um, they brought like beer to just hang out. And then it started like downpouring and like crazy, crazy storms. It was absolutely insane. And I got to tell you, I loved it. We're literally in this tiny little shed and me and Chris and uh, Pete and Elle and Ellie, you missed the part of the story with the internet. Were you getting to it? Oh, we no, 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 no. We sat down to get the internet set up, which was the point. The shed is literally, it's a very small, like, what What would you say? Three by three or two by three or something? No, Kara, shed. hang on, Kara, the, the seller's lawyer didn't tell the seller's agent that the closing was today. So the seller's agent didn't know. All of our side, they knew. Like our our agent knew the closing. Um, our lawyer knew the closing and then the bank obviously knew. Jen, isn't that the cutest? That was my brother. He took that photo as it was happening. Me and Allie were just looking out into the wilderness. We were looking at a deer. It was so, so cute. crazy. But we sat that just me and Chris sat in this tiny little shed um, after we got the keys to get the internet set up. The keys and to the Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just observing, like, I'm walking around, I'm doing my thing, I'm flying the drone, and I'm just trying to get everything sort of situated in my brain. Chris is doing all the technical, uh, the technical side of things. And then he's like, 
he got quiet. And when Chris gets quiet and in the zone, it's like there's an error, like something is going on. And at one point I'm like, oh, how's it going? He's like, I'm setting it up. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we know. That's what we've been doing now, for, listen, we have for like, 35 minutes. We're in wilderness and there's no, like I'm in a black hole and there's wires everywhere. Yeah. And I'm still trying to like figure out what's what because it's all new to me. And also what I have to say is you don't realize truly truly deeply how much you rely on the internet for the even the littlest things until all of your service is gone like completely gone there's no bars at all whatsoever for at least the five mile like window or radius or whatever so we had to basically get in the car in the middle of the rain and by the way we were waiting for pete ellen ellie to come and i said to them we're not going to have service so there's going to be a point where like if something goes wrong and you get there and we're not there just wait like we can't do anything about it so we had to drive down to the 15 minute away town to get service to call spectrum and guess what happened with that employee that i gloated about <laughs> she never scanned the products to oh and then activate when them. they said when my heart dropped a little bit because now this store is 30 minutes away from the property yeah and so when the woman said oh sometimes when they don't scan it we can't enter it and you have to go back to the store and i was like are you freaking kidding me i was me? just sitting there like please 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 don't let this but happen. she was really she was we didn't say anything and i mean like it is what it is i get it but um she was really nice and ended up fixing it we went back and now we have half a gigabit we have, legit we have a really good internet. connection there. And therefore, we put our Wi-Fi's up, our Wi-Fi's, our Wi-Fi routers up. We put up our cameras. We have we have Wi-Fi calling. We have Wi-Fi internet. Our compound, which Sam said earlier, the compound TM, has internet and phone, and we're good, and we're ready to go. We can stream the moment we get our Airstream, and um, I'm super pumped for and it. And look, you can see live, and this isn't live. But you can see the driveway. These are cameras that we have set up. Let's see what it looks like now. Queen Wolf said, can there be a key to the Jeep patch? That is very funny, Chris. And I'm writing that in the book. <laughs> Look at this murder scene. This is after dark. This is a really funny patch. Keys to the Jeep would be a great patch. It just, I think it's weirdly relatable to all of us. Look at this. Yeah, so Mary Jane, there is a driveway. Um, so that's the thing that's really nice about it is that uh, there's a paved driveway. There's a, that's set <laughs> set in, so it's like set in from the road, so that you're not on like none of the streets there are busy, but just so that it's still remote so feeling. A couple of comments. Sam said, "Remember when I used to when I went to Europe with using a physical map? How did we survive without Google Maps? Truly, don't know." I truly don't know. Don't forget uh, to post the Wi-Fi password in Discord. <laughs> so Queen Wolf said, no one can hear you scream and you cannot call 911, literally. Um, the driveway is paved, yep, and it stops right where the Airstream would go, but then past that it's just all wilderness all the way out to the first pond and then the second lake. Um, <laughs> Natasha, it looks like Get Outland, but you guys are white. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I missed it. I, it looks like you you guys are white, but that looks like a get out land. Dude, you know, I thought that. It totally does. I thought does. that driving up. It totally I saw does. a cop going the other direction, and I thought in my mind, I'm like, can you imagine a scenario where like that unfolds here? And I'm not going to spoil it. Please, no one who's watched the movie spoil it. Just just watch. Watch the movie Get Out. It's very, 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 very good. The the Sam, I don't get the keys to the Jeep reference. It's the song. Beep, beep. Who's got the keys to the Jeep? And it's just a line. Vroom, vroom. vroom. Mm? No? No, I think it's vroom. Mm. Yeah, that. Look at all these kitties who are on the cam. Um, so that is kind of a loose, quick story. We said, oh, what the last thing I wanted to say was we were in the shed, just me and Chris with the, the whole internet Oh, Smoriel, you can't kick Eloise out of there. This is so freaking funny. These are clippable moments. Oh, my God. Look at, oh, this is going to be. A best friend sleepover. Can you go to the... Oh, he left. So me and Chris, we have no seats. We have nothing set up. And then we leave to go to the call the lady. We come back and Pete and Ellen Ellie are there. And because... Listen, I think that when you have a kid, your preparedness... 
everything skyrockets. Yeah, yeah. Everything you're prepared for, at least, you know, if you're a good parent, I'm sure any parent is always going to be prepared to some extent. We open the shed. There is a small table with five chairs and a wagon for Ellie to sit in, in this tiny little shed. And we're, and beer, and we're just hanging out, having a good time. We stayed there for hours. We were there for, we, when, we probably got back there maybe like 5.30, and we didn't leave until... 8 30 i think and i peed out there twice in the it's woods now officially yours that, that was it. a that was part of the i think deed. you took a picture from like the top i did like i never saw this picture i have it i want to see it later um where you just see my head like through the gap in the height of where chris is where where as i am there's a what is that called a retainer wall retaining retaining wall, wall. And uh, you just see my hat, I think. I assume you just see my hat. I can't wait to play badminton down there. Um, I'm going to play badminton. Yeah, and then we have this flat land. And Chris is like, we could do anything we want down there. We can play badminton. We can make a volleyball court. I'm like, yeah, uh, okay, play one night of Switch Sports. I want to play badminton. And so all of that happened. It was just really great. And then we get in the car to drive home. And it was just a crazy now it's an it out, a crazy it was an, storm like if an hour and a half here, drive you knew that storm it was an hour and a half drive and i was driving in it and there were points where i was driving and i was just like right up against the windshield <laughs> and elias is sleeping in the passenger side i'm driving what am i supposed to do no i know but i'm driving this mac truck and it's a pickup and i can't even see the the lines on the road it was crazy I mean, we got home fine, but it was like, I was, my butthole was puckered for some of it. <laughs> so the outhouse situation, what's going to happen is when we have our air between this moment and our airstream will be the, the worst because we don't have our home with us. But the moment the airstream goes up there, we're good. We're going to be living in luxury. Yeah, because it already has a septic. It has water, it has electric. It's like, it's totally oh, the can perfect. Can we poop like straight into the poop hole um yeah you just have to you have to take off the pvc cap put your butt against it and then just push really hard so that it shoots down into the septic because i don't think otherwise it's just going to be like, like yeah it's going to be on the plastic the, yeah it's going to be weird or whatever and then you're have to like hose then you're gonna it down have to hose it down yeah. yeah okay just thinking you need thinking out loud party popper butthole Yes, <laughs> I'm told Bjork will be the official music of the compound. Let me tell you, if Bjork, if certain Bjork songs were playing loudly in that compound at night, we there would be we. That's where like we communicate with the spirits. That's what will happen. <laughs> um, Pink. Oh my God, I love Dark and Stormy's. Do you remember when we got those on the cruise? They were so good. I love it. I love ginger ale too. That reminds me of one of my favorite cocktails. Yeah, I love Dark and Stormy's. If that was Wednesday night, this is insane. You have to drive through that. I, yes, yes, that it was, Wednesday, was night. Wednesday night. It was absolutely terrifying. And we saw so much lightning in the distance. Do you remember we were driving that one, like that that one part, and it was just like a bolt of lightning right in front of us, and we were bought, like blinded. Yeah, I fully. When I blinked, and then I, I was just like, Jesus, the take the wheel, because I didn't know. I couldn't see then. So Hi, Bernie, um, we need uh, to get to stuff. I know we need to do the patch. W look, here's my recommendation. Can we just start a quiz? Folks are waiting for a quiz. Yes. Let's start one quiz. Then we'll get to the patch. One o'clock. Second quiz. Where's my patch in all of this? I said, start the first quiz, finish it. Then patch. Then one oh, o'clock. Okay, then next quiz. Bus. No sleep. No club. Another club. Plane. No sleep. No sleep. Mm. Another plane. Another plane. <laughs> uh, yes, we were very scared oh. the, about, about getting home. God uh, bless safely. Gaga. It always comes back to the poop. I know it. I know it. <laughs> um, I recently mentioned that story of the poop with the nuns. And I just, it, it like my brain, I just get... I don't know what it is. And I said to Chris and our it's friends, needles like, feeling. I think That's that I do it feeling. because we, I think in my brain, it's a thing we all can listen. When you talk about poop, the ice has been broken. Yeah. I mean, but there, there is the, there is the book that's every says everybody poops. So it is something we, that's have what common. I'm saying. Every single human has that it's in like, common at minimum. Yeah. Think it, of your favorite celebrity. You might think that they're the hottest or the most incredible or whatever the case might be. The queen. 
She poops. She poops. I bet it's a whole part. I it's a whole thing. Look I at, bet. Look, look, look. <laughs> How cute are they? What okay. happens in the Buckingham Palace bathrooms? We are going. <laughs> can to you go. imagine? Can you imagine if the queen just had something like that did not settle her stomach and she just destroys the bathroom like tater tot? <laughs> We're and start. then leaves with that smug face on, like when she's cutting the cake. Oh, that would be cool. We are going to start, <laughs> folks, as a reminder. If you want to play along with this quiz, what you need to do is while you're watching, either on the app or on the website, there is uh, a little icon of a blue and red square that says quiz kit, I think. Is that what it says? Yeah, quiz kit. Am I you playing? You click it. Yes, you click but I'm, it. What? Oh, okay. No, I'm playing. You click it, and then um, you're going to click the three dots and click link identity so we know who you are. The winner will win their choice of uh, musk nation musk um, magnet, magnet or button or, or bu button um, plus like uh, b the business card or whatever. But the reality is, we cannot send that to you unless you, we know who you are. Oh, okay, thanks, so make sure. Pete, for subbing for 12 months. Holy McMoley, a year. Pete, we just literally were talking about how prepared you all were. And how awesome you guys are. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see Pete tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. I and think so. Ellie. I mean, we talked, did we? And tomorrow's supposed to be beautiful. That? I think tomorrow's supposed to be beautiful. Um, So we're going to get started with the first round of trivia, but I'm going to give you all just like a 30-second window here to get prepared. Click the quiz kit thing. Click the three dots. Um, and link your identity. If you link it, we will know who you are. Um, there will be also a mobile la uh, high latency mode, which means that the, each question will take a little bit longer than 25 seconds overall, just to give everyone an equal chance. The web users usually get the content a bit faster than the mobile I'm going to change it do. to trivia, right? Is that what I should do? Chrissy said that, Leslie said that I say Putin like Chris says button. So you probably say, oh, can you say that word? Putin. And then say the other one? Button. And then again, the other one? Putin. And the other one? Button. It's a little different. I think you it would be Putin. Putin. Like you're pooing in. Putin. No, I would say Putin. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's Putin. 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 And the T is heard in between our ears. It's 83 in New York tomorrow, Obishi, but I think it's supposed to be like 75 up. Like uh, west of you guys. An unvoiced vowel is what it may be called. I did, said Leslie. Start the raffle or start the trivia, Elias. Oh, I, I, I said, yeah, I was waiting for everyone. Okay, I'm starting. Now it's official. Okay, so you're all getting some rules on your page here. It should say it um, up there, what's going to happen. Um, I might make some live adjustments as it goes, but an unvoiced consonant. Yeah, that Paul, that makes a lot more sense. Putin. Bootin. Bootin and Putin. I don't hear what I'm saying differently. This with very first one is uh, books, and it's easy mode. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, it's the answer is everybody poops. Yes. Oh, my God. Do we have yes, we have theme music now. Oh, Elias. George Orwell wrote the, this book, which is often considered a statement on government oversight. To Kill a Mockingbird, Catcher in the Rye, 1984, or The Old Man and the Sea. Is that how we do this? Uh, spoiler oh, alert, this is my through. favorite book. This book is fantastic, and if you don't know it, you gotta read it. The whole 1984... Uh, oh. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, the whole, like... The whole catcher in Tom, the rye. What's uh? What's the name? Tom Holden? Thomas Thomas, Thomas Holden. Sawyer. Holden Caulfield. Holden Caulfield. That's Holden Caulfield. Hold. I think his name is Holden Caulfield from the Catcher in the Rye. The answer is uh, 1984. That is a very good book. It was the birth of the term Big Brother. Uh, so if you are unaware, please go watch it uh, or rather read it. It's really, really good. And or if you don't have time to read. to read it, just watch Big Brother on Julie Chen. Because it's going to be the, the same thing. Which is the loosest connection between the two. I will say that what is connection between them is just simply the fact that it is um, 
What's oh, it called? it's totally grim. But I think it's so interesting okay, that it was question. written. It, what was the name of Captain Nemo's submarine in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Was it the Neptune, the Poseidon, the Nautilus, or the Atlantis? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to wait till the time is up there and then I'll lower the volume. I think I'm going to guess this. It rings a bell. Okay, I need to go run and grab my power adapter because I'm realizing my power adapter, my computer is going to die. I'll be back in one second. Oh, well, I can't be the host. No, you won't. I I'll just be like the the people on um, on uh, Price is Right where they just showcase the, the different prizes, which I think they totally, I think Bob Barker was not a good person and didn't treat the women right. But I think now they have also sexy men on as models and not just women, which is great. Oh, good like job, it. Elias. You're great, but um, everybody's waiting for you, just so you know. Jen, oh, they do have a sexy man on it. That's all that, that matters. I am dead at Eloise. Okay. Nope. The Nautilus. I didn't get it. Wow, lots of you got it. <laughs> I said the Poseidon. All right. That's not, whoops. That needs to be closer to me, Chris, if I could. Wow. That was exhausting. I didn't win. Okay. It wasn't exhausting for me. I just sat here. <laughs> I would have guessed the Atlantis. Did you read the book? I did not. I started to. I downloaded it at some point, but I did not read the book. Next question is... Green Eggs and Ham is a book by which author? Roald Dahl, Dr. Seuss, A.A. A. Milne, or Beatrix Potter? Who wrote Green Eggs and Ham? Um, Edgar Allan Poe. I love this little 60s jib jab. It's fun. Jib jab. <sighs> they have a couple of hot guys on Price is Right. You know who else is hot? The, the pit crew on um, RuPaul's Drag Race. They're real hot. Professor Edward and the Wizard. That's a very grim book. I'm surprised the guy's like, yeah, it's very grim. Mandatory reading in the eighth grade. Yeah, I think for us too. Original 1984 Apple Macintosh commercial. Yep, real good. Read that Catcher in the Rye in high school. Interesting read. We also read it. We had to read it too. And I remember it was I like don't a think big I read deal. Catcher in the Rye. Everybody is just investigating Eloise tonight. I know. The answer is Dr. Seuss. Uh, almost all of you got that right. Um... The, what was the last thing I was going to say? Oh, in, in Catcher in the Rye, there's a lot of cursing. And I remember like there needed to be like some sort of awareness that like that's going to happen. Oh God, come you on. Know. Okay, let's go so, on. I, yeah, we're going. We got to wait a little bit. Oh my God, I can't catch my breath, Chris. So that, the run that we did today was, um, what would you say? 35 like three, minutes. Three miles-ish we ran. Just, you ran like 3.2, 3.3. Um, I ran three and a half, excuse I'm sorry, me. three and a half. Next question is which famous spy novelist wrote the children's story Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Is it Joseph Conrad? Is it Ian Fleming? Is it Graham Greene or John Buchan? I thought Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was a TV show. And I thought it was about like, um, I'm going to just wait because I don't want to. I thought it was a TV show, and I thought that, uh, what's his name from uh, Cars, the Pixar movie, the Lightning tow truck? McQueen? No, the, the tow truck. Huber or something. Who's, who's uh, the tow truck in? Let me think of it. It starts an S. It's like an S sound. Schmader. Schmader? Yeah. Schrader. Schra no, Schmader. Schmader? Mater. Mater. I thought Mater was a spinoff of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> Isn't it about a car? Isn't Chitty Chitty Bang Bang about cleaning chimneys? Really? Is it chimneys? I live in a weird the world in my mind. The answer is Ian Fleming. 
Oh, but I got it right. So listen, fake it until you make it. <laughs> I can't believe I got that right. Oh, it is about a car. What am I thinking of for Mary Poppins? Yeah, no, Mary Poppins, they're cleaning the chimneys. Then they say the... Chim chimney, chim chimney, yeah, that's, not, that's what it is. Yeah, that's not chi it's not chitty chitty chimney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about a guy who makes inventions, a car that is a boat. Oh, so it's about uh, Belle's father. Mm, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Maurice. Uh, okay. What is Harry Potter's dad's name? Joey Potter, Harry Potter Sr., James Potter, Frank Potter. If I was playing, I would know this immediately. That oh, wait. Is, it, it is, is a Van movie. Dyke. It is Dick Van Dyke. It I is a movie, that. though. I'm just amazed by my knowledge in oh, yeah, pop, best. pop culture. Best. Just yeah. Harry Potter? What are you talking about? It says Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter Sr. You don't know that that's not his name. That's suspect. You should know this. Nobody's name. I don't like when Harry Potter questions come into the fold here because I'm just absolutely against what <laughs> JK is doing. But it, you get what you get and you don't get upset. Harry Potter is not a viable answer. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is James Potter. That is who is Whoever the... picked Harry Potter, I love you because it's just Harry fantastic. Potter Fan Sr. Fantastic. Yeah, I remember James Potter was always picked on by... Um, yeah, what was me? Blah, blah, blah. Next yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Heidi. <laughs> Definitely Heidi. Okay, next question is, this is question six. We're, we're just over halfway done with quiz number one, and I'm curious who will win. Next question we have. Whoa, that is a mistake. Next question up is... Uh, who was the author of the 1954 novel Lord of the Flies? Was it Stephen King? Was it Hunter Fox? Or F. Scott Fitzgerald? Whoops, I'm not playing my music. Or was it William Golding? This is the movie, uh, I'm sorry, the novel called Lord of the Flies. This is the book with Piggy and the, like, pig head or whatever and the mosquitoes and... I read this book. It was... The conch shell. Conch. Conch. Conch shell. I read this book, but um, I don't know the author. Do you know the author? I know who I, is not the author. Yes, that's that. I, w I would have been fifty percent guessing mm -hmm. on this. Same reason. Oh, he's going crazy, crazy, crazy raisin, crazin. I think I would have gotten this. No, nope, I didn't get it. Kara's browser crash. I didn't get to answer. R.I.P. The answer is William Golding. I pick. I picked Hunter Fox. Um, that was the other one I would have picked. But I think deep down, I feel like William Golding is is my jam. That's who I would have said. I knew it was not F. Scott. Crap! I, I just want to be game. positive. And um, oh, I'm so curious. If you're in the negatives, how? Who's winning? I want to know. No, I'm not in negative yet. Mm, but I'm yeah, not doing well. Saying. Next question, question seven is, what is the name of the three-headed dog in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? Is it Spike, Poofy, Spot, or Fluffy? Again, we're looking for the three-headed dog in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I don't know the answer to that this one. That is blocking the entrance to the door they need to go to to do whatever they need to do. I would 100% know this. Think of a name Hagrid would give would give them. That's don't cheat, Elias. Zero seconds left. No, I have seconds. Oh, well. This game needs lifelines. Like who wants to be a millionaire? I had read uh I had to read this in eighth grade in New Jersey, uh, which was what? Uh, Lord of the Flies. Yeah, they read that too here. They're actually reading it in high school here now. The answer is Fluffy. Yeah, me too, Imposter Steve. I'm over it. I picked Fluffy. I at least right, got Imposter it. Right, Imposter Jen, I agree. Normally, I have to be honest with you, I would have gone through and vetted these questions and removed and X'd out anything Harry Potter slash JK Rowling, but um, I did not have any time from before. So we get what we get and we don't get upset. Did you guess Fluffy? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, you did I glass? I, gl I glassed it. Gluffy? Um, next question is 
what is the name of Sherlock Holmes's brother? Is it Mycroft Holmes, Mederi Holmes, Martin Holmes, or Herbie Hancock Holmes? We are These looking are... for the name of Sherlock Holmes's brother. They're all great names. I... I would like to think that I would have gotten this one. Is what I think. Which, by the way, folks, I'm not answering and I can't yes. answer because it, I'm, I'm literally looking at the answer <laughs> when I do this. Short Pim, I love a good Mobile pun. Mobile homes. I love a good pun. <laughs> That's amazing. So anyone who's playing with the with uh, us tonight, be aware this is time. There's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of technology happening here to make this happen. I don't even understand on the back end how it's happening, but the concept of a lifeline, an impossibility on this. We can't pause it once it starts. But maybe there's another app we can use one day. But right now, this is what we got. What we got. The answer is Mycroft Homes. I love that name. I got it. I don't know where I dug for that, what? but I think I... I dug a lot. Oh, my God. Reason. Reason is absolutely losing his mind. It is too funny. Reason, you're crazy. Martin Holmes, I think that they picked Martin because isn't the guy who plays Sherlock, like a Benedict Cumberdoodle, his partner, isn't his first name Martin? It's Martin Sheen. Yeah, no, it's, it's like something Sheen. Martin or Martin something. Martin Scorsese. Mm. Um. Next, which is not a book in the freaking Harry Potter series. Oh, geez. Is I it the house call elf? Call poo-poo on this. The Chamber of Secrets, The Prisoner of Azkaban, or The Deathly Hallows. Ugh. Which of these is not a book in the Harry Potter series? There's other books in Harry Potter. Holy McMoley. Yeah, it's Martin Freeman. That's why I think they picked that. No, Jen, I promise you, I have access to changing it. I did, didn't have time to change it. There's a million questions in this. It's just by the default. If I don't change anything, it probably picks the most easy <laughs> ones that it thinks. Cumberdoodle. <laughs> God, I'm so over all this Harry Potter nonsense. I can also make my own quizzes, but uh, honestly, right now, like with the, uh, business uh, being as busy as it is. Reveal it. Enemy, reveal the, the house reveal. elf the deathly hallows was the last book which was split into two movies i unfortunately because you know what two is worse than one i have an extensive amount of knowledge with harry potter i have read the books four times i've listened to the audiobooks twice and i've watched the movies endless times oh I'm game of thrones you, trivia is a great idea chrissy i know a lot but the problem is i'm completely just off I don't want to deal with Harry Potter. Can anymore. you put I'm it in the it. book for uh, Game of Thrones trivia? Because yes. I would like that too. Okay, I'm gonna go next question, which is, uh, how do you spell Harry Potter? Who wrote the young adult novel The Fault in Our Stars? Is it Stephen Chbosky? Is it Stephanie Meyer? Is it John Green or Suzanne Collins? I don't know. We are looking for The Fault in Our Stars, which is also a movie. It's a tearjerker of a story. And a uh, big hit with a lot of the young adults in the world. Okay, what am I writing in the book? Game of Thrones trivia? Game of Thrones trivia. I think um, the answer is not Suzanne Collins. It is not Stephanie Meyer. I would have picked either John Green or Stephen Chbosky, um, which would have, I Isn't think... Isn't Suzanne Collins the one who is... Uh, isn't she, like, on... MSNBC or something. Suzanne Collins is the woman who wrote the Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, I got it right. And then uh, Stephanie Meyer is the one who wrote Twilight. Yeah, and then she wrote that Alien book. Yeah, the host. All right, next up. Oh wait, but that was the last question. Ooh, we're gonna have a winner, folks. Who's gonna be the winner? Suzanne Collins is a Senate representative for Maine? Like, actual Suzanne Collins? No, S Susan Collins, not Suzanne Collins. Sue Collins. Yeah, she's the one who flip-flops. She's Republican, but she has gone against Trump, and then everybody gets Final results. Who has won? JJG, you are the winner. Sam and Watson, you're so close. Uh, 9,000 away, is oh, that right? Oh, wow. 
Awesome. Congrats, wow, JJG. Folks. This was so a close one. We had one. a close call here. JJG won. Uh, Sam was second. Patsy was third. Wendy was fourth. And Nikki MKS was fifth. Holy McMoley. Good job, everyone. Um, so the winner of books is JJG. JJG. Do you want a, a pat or um, a button or a magnet? She's sex harder than a vacuum factory spelled differently to different people. Back to the future trivia. And we also have a dare in place by OGC saying, I dare anyone to beat me. I did. Uh... Remember when Leah was nearly last and she was losing her mind? Oh, somebody's that was so funny. What happened? Somebody's loving the cable. <laughs> Is that raisin? No, it's Bernie. Bernie. Bernie, get out of here. A magnet. JJG okay. says magnet. Can you Got put it. it in the book? I'm Official. putting it in the book. Okay, now, Chris, Congrats, I need for JJG. you to do your patch, and then we're going to do wine o'clock, then move on to the next quiz. Okay, the patch is going to be for anybody who's tuning in, so you don't have to participate in, um, in the uh, trivia to win the patch. You just have to be here and... Um, that's it. Just be here. Can um I have my music, please? You got it. Maestro? Nope, that's not my music. That's Why is that not? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my mistake. Oopsies. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> okay, so uh, I oh, made... Oh, my first one in a year. So excited. That is so awesome. Congratulations. You earned it. You totally earned it. Um, this is the patch for today. It is Dexter, and it says smart. I love this font. Um, it's got these weird... Uh, do you see these little, like, frills on them? I do, yeah. The little diagonalies. Yeah, I really like it. Um, and so this, I feel... he. I didn't realize his nose is almost a beak. Is that his nose or his mouth? I don't know I what it is. I think it's a combo of both, isn't it's it? It's a nose mouth. Yeah, a, n a mouth, a mose, or a mouth. An, n wait. A, no a, a mose or a mouth? A mouth or a... A mose. A mose. I'm on it. Boom, boom, boom. I got it in my head. I don't my know. My brain matter. My brain holds. Um, so this is the... We have lots of people wanting Back to the, back to the Future trivia. This is the giveaway for today. This is the final version. I do have an edit on this one. Um, this, the edit on this one is the original here. A couple of things. One, um, I fixed the glasses so that they were closer to the edge. I also did a cutout underneath the black of the eyeballs because on this one, see, they're like, I don't know. They're getting like lost. So I cut out the blue underneath instead of like stitching oh, over top. Oh, good it. job, Chris! There were a couple other areas that maybe aren't. That is so minimal, and I would have never seen that. Noticeable, Chris. On that the is camera. remarkable. Like I um, closed the gap on the ear over here on some of the thread and on the right. So and the the hairline here, you see, there's a little gap. I closed that. Just little stupid things that I wanted to fix. Um, this is the final version, though, the one on top that you're seeing uh, that we will give away to somebody who enters the raffle. Anybody can enter. It's free. Um, this takes 26 minutes to stitch. It's 13,391 stitches. One for the community. I've got another one for the wall. And that's the... Um, the patch for today. Chris this is a really, um, a really uh, ap apropos patch. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> As in, good job. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Okay, you you, you got to switch us, Christopher. Um. Right to wine o'clock. Yes. Right to wine. Yeah. Let's go to wine. Um, folks. Which I wanna... one is it? This one? I never know. Yeah. I'm going to just... Uh, oh, the ratings are... Geez. That was partially on me because I was supposed to make Jeez sure, but I didn't Louise. check that. That's also not our wine. Wait, wait, wait. We're not there. I just want to state 
publicly that Golden Girls trivia, it will not happen until I'm done watching the show. Um, I'm in the middle of it. We're in the middle of season two. I'm loving it. I do not want anything spoiled. And I also then selfishly want to participate in it. So that is what's going to happen. I love the idea, but we're not going to do it. Okay, wine o'clock. Right now on this wine o'clock, which I do not have up there, we have a Kentucky... I said that weird. Kentucky? Oh, you just want to get us banned. Kentucky Derby. I was running out of time, as I mentioned multiple times. I saw this. I knew we never had it. It was slightly more expensive than I wanted to spend, but it was fine. And I'm not here for the story. I read it before. It's literally like Kentucky Derby, like horse racing. Yeah, like it's like merch. As the preferred wine of the Kentucky Derby, Kendall Jackson is proud to offer this commemorative uh, bottle. Is that a Kardashian? That's what I think, isn't it? Did Lit- she marry it literally someone, and then took well, the Kendall, name Jackson? Kendall Kardashian, maybe not Kendall Jackson. No, maybe she got married and you didn't know. Is proud to offer this commemorative bottling, a commemorative bottling. Ooh. This limited release wine. Oh, excuse me. Is aged in small oak barrels, creating a textured palate with notes of blank, blank horse manure, and accompanied by hints of blank and blank. Cheers to the hundred and forty eighth. Run for the roses, whatever that means. Oh, those were not things that resonate with no, me. No, <laughs> at all. This whole thing doesn't resonate for me, with me. Absolutely um, not. Wait, so what? It, it's horse manure? Do you know how to... <laughs> 19th century farming trivia. <laughs> Lost trivia. That is something I would be here for. Maybe what I could do is get Can I have your glass? Brian um, LaMatina has offered in the past to um, help us out with trivia. And if maybe we can get him to do something and then have him control it, like if he's here or something like that. Yeah. So we can figure something out. But if it is lost trivia, I really want to participate in that. Okay, here we go. Let's see what <laughs> Jen said to Sam. I don't have JJG in the archive. It's possible the last one was during the group of episodes not available online, which was from late September to early November. Yeah, episodes 101, I think, it's at 108, are missing. They're lost. JJG, can you send your address, too, of where I should send it to? Because I think it, it has been a while. I don't know if I have your info. Um, Deb? Yeah. Um, This is a cab. Okay, so I'm Jen. not smelling anything. I don't smell anything either. It smells like that a washed... That is wa- the craziest thing. I literally don't smell anything. A washed horse. Oh, this is 14.5 ABV. Um, and it's the, a cab. It is a cab. Kendall Jackson. 148th running. Run for the roses. Ooh. I think this is what a jockey's jockstrap tastes like. Ugh. I get cinnamon. Do they put cinnamon down there to keep from chafing? <laughs> Why are you focused on it tasting like that? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, it's the it's in the running. <laughs> Willis Major said, "A washed horse, LMAO." Uh, oh, it's very dry. It it's like my little things are shooting. Patsy said it has no smell that it might be corked. So it is incredibly sour. It's no, it's so dry that I feel like I'm eating. It's Sufrosa Tahilia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. I feel like my lips and tongue have both, and the bottom of the top of my mouth and the bottom have both all become sandpaper. No dust bunnies. There's no room in this jock strap for dust bunnies. So literally, tell me what you think the the flavors are. Blueberry, cinnamon. I like the way the light is hitting me. I like it's. I think it's like if you have cinnamon, the cinnamon challenge. This is what 
if you had that in wine form, that's what this would be. I could see that, but give me another thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> what kind of barrel is it in? An oak barrel. Okay. And in that oak barrel, they threw in a box of some stuff. What do you think is in this box? Sea monkeys. No. Um, if you have one of these in nutritional a yeast. No, and it comes from a place that we couldn't visit re- until recently. In, we couldn't visit. We couldn't visit, and they couldn't come from there to here until recently. Some some things changed in our government that allowed C- uh, Cuba Cuban cigars. Yeah, there's Cuban cigars in this. A p- what? The flavor of Cuban cigars. I don't know. Okay. And then black. Jock strips. <laughs> I'm assuming you mean the color of the jock, the jock strip. Yes. Um, or I mean, maybe it's not washed. I don't know. Oh, that's the. I'm gonna throw up. No, the uh, black cur- currants or whatever. Oh, I thought you were gonna say black licorice. I could get licorice more than I could get currants from this. Okay, I gotta. Like I'm gonna drink this. It's fine, but yeah, it's I'm really. Gonna, oh, I'm, I didn't even rate I'm it. I'm rating. Jesus. Wait, no. Okay, go. I need to rate yeah, this. Yeah, go do it. Yeah. I'm going to do this one. Yeah. It's, yeah. The last three is a history. solid three. Yeah. I would never buy this again. I will I will get my cigars and oak barrels and jock straps elsewhere. Thank you very much. Can I tell you how much this cost? No, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> I would like the folks online to know. We literally just bought a piece of property and Elias is out here charging up the what is it? Tell me. Twenty seven ninety nine. No, that's crazy. Isn't I would never crazy? pay twenty seven dollars for this. this no way. Is... Never again. Absolutely never. Which actually now that I know the price, or now that I've said the price out loud again, I feel like I should read it lower. Like it's not. This is a not one good star wine, wine, Paul. We've had once, um, and it made Elias throw up. Yeah, that's a one star wine. That is the epitome of one star wine. It was very, 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 very bad. Twenty seven dollars. This is crap. Willis Major said, I'm adoring the banter here. Uh, so listen up, Willis. Uh, this is what you get here. <laughs> this is uh, a real good representation Buckle of what up. we do for two and a half hours, three times a week. And If anybody is... wants to move in with us, this is us 24-7. Yes. <laughs> um, so grossness. Do not buy this wine. I do not recommend it. If you do like sour and dusty and dry and jockstrap, this is for you. Listen, Sam, you can get a nice bottle of wine for like 15, 20 bucks. This is, if you say 20 bucks is like a, an expensive, like a, a good wine, paying a $7 premium for literal garbage. Mm. No, I'm not here for it. Is Eloise okay? Should I move her down? Is she looking to escape? Yeah, I think so. Eloise? Look at her. Wait, can you go? Maybe to full just screen? replace. Take her. Yeah, yeah. But can like, you go to the, which one is it? Full screen. Eloise. Hold up. Oh, Eloise. Yeah. Eloise. Take the Game Boy out and just put Eloise back. Oh my God, Eloise, you're just the freaking cutest. I want to just squeeze you. She is the definition of cuteness aggression. Oh, Eloise, see, I knew she wanted to leave. Don't leave, Eloise. Stay there. Oh, she's like... Oh, she's... Aww. Smiling. Yeah, it's fine. We... Oh. Okay, well, oh, we can well, go back. <laughs> she's Tater out. Tot's like, okay, fine. Um, okay, we're going to start qu- uh, trivia. The next one is mm, history. You really got to write better ages, Chris. This one is history. It is medium. Let us see what this one is. And we're doing the mobile one. It's going to be a little bit between each question. This one is history. And let us all play. Anyone can play. Anyone who is watching can participate. You just got to click on the little quiz kit icon. And if you want to win, you have to link your identity using the three dots. And uh, the winner will win a prize. 
Um, the last time I drank wine, quote, was Arbor Mist by the bottle right after college. Arbor Mist is just not really. I don't know what Arbor that. Mist is. It's just real sort of basic. Um, all right, We've got so, muskrats everywhere tonight. Oh, shoot. Which of the following ancient Near Eastern peoples still exists as a modern ethnic group? Is it the Assyrians? Is it the Elamites? Is it the Babylonians or the Hittites? I know the answer to this. I could have answered this question. I think I know the answer. I'm going to go for it. Wow, they really come in hot with this history. Yeah, I got it. They're really going. Yeah. Good job, um, Raisin. Raisin would get this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mayor Mayor said sugar water. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Oh, I'm telling you, water. I I, you I think that, I you need... You know what I think when I think sugar water? What? Oh, yeah. I think I need a dental dam when I'm drinking this. What do I think when I think sugar water? The guy from... Um, uh, from... Men in uh, Men in Black. Yes, good job. You got it. What's What's the thing? Um, he's like, I need sugar. No, it's like sugar water, sugar water. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. The answer is Assyrians. Many of you got it. Um, hit it. Assyrians. A Assyrians. That's what I said. You said the answer Assyrians. Is Assyrians. I think you said A-Syrians. Um, oh, my God. I was too busy reminiscing about Arbor Mist that I missed that one. Oh, what was that? A dental dam. I heard you say that, Chris. Oh, that <laughs> famous actor from MIB. Yeah. He is famous. Vince Vaughn, right? No, oh. that's... No, that's... Wait, what just happened? Not oh, Vince Russian. Vaughn. That's uh, Vin Diesel. No, it's Vince Vaughn. Which of the following is not classified as a Semitic language? Is it Akkadian? Is it Mandaic? Maltese? Or Sumerian? Which one of these is not classified as a Semitic language? I think I know this one. Chris, I don't really understand what happened with the camera, like why everything is sort of working now. I'm confused, but I have to say I really am enjoying the It just the needed color. to warm up. I feel like I have a little bit of a tan with like the light coming in. I don't understand what changed, but here we are. On this day. Mm-hmm. Did you get it right, Chris? Crap, No. The Sumerian language is classified as, wait, oh, they're throwing a knot in there. So which of the following is not a Semitic language? So Sumerian is an anti-Semitic language? I don't even understand. What I don't even know what it is. I just put Maltese. Isn't that a poodle or something? I don't even know if it's a language. It's probably a place, but I don't know. I, that's what I put, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, Maltese, 16 people said Maltese. Yeah, let's go to the next one because I don't like this question. <laughs> it does work well, right, my camera? Imposter Jen, this is what you get. You don't get upset. It is a, we literally picked history, medium, 10 questions, go. Next question is... When did the Battle of the Bulge end? Oh, it's never ending. December 7th, 1941, January 25th, 1945, December 16th, 1944, or August 6th, 1945, or special question, uh, special answer, last night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for gray sweatpants. Am I right? <laughs> What's the... L lent, uh, lentil, lentil legs. legs. It's a am lentil right? legs kind of day. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I don't know the answer to this. <laughs> Kara, I got to <laughs> tell you, this one, everybody is all over the place. So this, if you had a chance to win one that's like not in your wheelhouse, this one's it. Steve said, if this is... <laughs> <laughs> if this is medium <laughs> what's hard that's what she said listen folks if everyone's having a tough time you know what that means that also nobody knows history chance. though 
It's the answer is 1945, January 25th. And you know what's funny? I wanted to state this. I said I, August 6th. I was going to say to you that I bet no one knows the answer to this, which means that st- statistically it's going to fall equal. Yeah. And look what happened. It fell equally. It totally did. Statistics works, folks. Wow. Gray sweatpants. Am I right? Yeah, right. Are you actually a history buff, Imposter Steve? Oh, you're just joking. I really didn't like history in school. Yeah, I, I only had I was a math history. and science. What was the transfer of disease, crops, and people across the Atlantic shortly after the discover the Americas called? Was it the Columbian Exchange? Was it the transatlantic slave trade? Was it the triangle trade or the Silk Road? We are looking for the name of the transfer of disease, crops, and people across the Atlantic shortly after the discovery of the Americas. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for all of you. Did you get it? Brittany Peanut said I've seen B- B- Band the Brothers a hundred times. No, I was gonna I, I would have put, I will tell you what mm. I would have put when it happened. I didn't get it. Would you put what I put? That's what I would have put. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Because the reason I I did it is because um, I'm going to just wait for it to, like, populate. Paul, that's what I feel on every question tonight. This is... So I would have put... The answer is the Colombian exchange. I would have put transatlantic slave trade because triangle trade... I don't think I don't think that was right. Silk Road, I think, is in um, e- uh, East... Asia, yeah, I think and then so. the Colombian exchange, I just would have assumed was down to up, but in my brain, I was thinking left to right. That's why I don't know. I think this is a many people put transatlantic slave trade. Wow, imposter Jen said history was one of my fave subjects, but these are ridiculous. I'm curious what hard was. It's the one that makes you cry, it's the one in the gray sweatpants. Oh, no. It doesn't even have to be. <laughs> Nikki and Cass said I have a history degree, and these are tough. Holy <laughs> McMoley. Jeez, Louise. Okay, next question we have is, let's see what other thing we all don't know. Which American civilization is the source of the belief that the world would end or drastically change on December 21st, 2012? Is it the Mayans, the Incas, the Navajos, or the Aztecs? I think I, I know this, this one. one. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Look at this little kitty. Yeah, now's my time to make my money back. Isn't this oh, song reason. cute? I'm obsessed. I like it. When do we get to use the other one? The other one, I think, is the before and after, and I missed it both times. It's like the oh. intro situation. Mm. Okay. That's what I think. The answer, folks, I think that the majority, un- to atypically to the rest, is that I think many of you are going to get this, and we'll see in a sec. The answer is... Uh, The Mayans. Yeah, you all got it. Most everyone got it. That's that whole, like, wasn't there a movie called, like, 2012 or something? I and, think so. Like, everyone was all like, oh, it's going to b- destroy the world. Kind of like Y2K was supposed to destroy everything. And then it did yeah. not literally nothing. I mean, because they prepared for it. I remember I was at a friend's house you know. uh, in high school for um, 2000 New Year's. And we were all like, uh, is anything going to There's a little bit of nerves. Yeah. yeah, we were all just sitting there like, uh. Steve said that a nephew, one of his nephews was born on December 21st, 2012. He was born in six weeks early. And I said I wanted to get him out. Bef- he, I said he wanted to get before the world ended. I called him Apocalypse Baby. <laughs> wow. Okay, next up is when Christopher Columbus sailed to America, what was the first region that he arrived in? The Bahamas Archipelago? The Isthmus, uh, Isthmus of Panama, Nicaragua, or Florida. Where did Chris Columbus sail to the Americas and hit what region first? What was the name of his of his uh, boats again? I think it was he had Cacciatore. Yes, yeah, Sagittori. Sagittori, ca- Cacciatore, and. Santa Matori or something. No, M- Maria Tori. Oh, Santa Tori. Santa Tori. Catch Tori. Yeah, what is I don't even know what these words are. Isth- Isthmus. That's a hard one. 
Jersey, I should have been an answer. Taco Bell. <laughs> if he was smart. <laughs> Imposter Steve. Those are the actual names of the boats. Can we Chris, have a write-in? I want a write-in section so that we can see what great <laughs> answers people get. Chris recently gave, we we posted a, a reel, a highlight reel, uh, uh, quite a different name than the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. I think his was like Cacciatore. Something Tory and Santa Tory, something like that. I don't know where you came up with that. Where you come up with anything? Who knows? I don't know. My brain is okay. A next big question jump mess. is: Which historical conflict killed the most people? Wait, I you the didn't tell us that we got it right. Mongol conquests, the Taping Rebellion, the Three Kingdoms War, or World War Two? Which of those historical conflicts killed the most people? I think I know the answer to this one. Also, I'm going to wait a sec to, to say this, but I I apologize. I didn't give you the answer to the, the last one. Is the Bahamas. Yeah, it was the Bahamas Peninsula. Not the if, isthmus. Isthmus. Can you say that? Isthmus. Isthmus? Oh, wait, it's just isthmus. Yeah, that's what I it's said. It's a narrow strip of land with sea on either side forming a link between two larger areas of land. It's like when you say button, you don't really say the whole thing. You just say part of it. I need to start school over. It said Scarra K. Listen, they're not doing much more now. It has to be World War II. There was a significant portion of the world population killed off in that war. The answer is, in fact, World War II. Yes. World wow. War II I thought it was, was the Mongol conquest. The answer. Crap. I didn't get it. Mm-mm. Isthmus. So this wine at this point, if Spider-Man was at the the opening of my mouth hole and shooting his webs into my like mouth hole and closing my throat up and my <laughs> and my roof of my mouth and the bottoms of like my, my tongue, and then he asked me to swallow, like that's what I'm feeling. That's not this kind of stream, Elias. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> the United States Army Air Corps became the United States Air Force on what date? September 18th, 1947, November 8th, 1944, December 14th, 1946, or October 27th, 1945. When did the United States Air Army Air Corps become the United States Air Force? I'm going to just go with my gut on this. That was my gut. I don't, know, I don't know if it's right. Is it a ruminated gut or just your gut? Your No, that was just a gut. What's but the opposite slightly... of a ruminated gut? Gut? Gut. Guts. The... What was it? What was the name of the what the was Nickelodeon the... show? No, what was the song? Oh, I don't know. It was like ba 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 guts. Wow. Lots of you got that one right. It's September 18th, 1947. November 8th, 1944 was the second option that most people pick. I picked it right. This is really hard. These are neither medium nor very general knowledge questions. I agree. These are way like when we talk about dates to me, when it's a specific date, no one really knows the answer to that. But when it's like a generalized concept, that's a little bit of a different story. Yeah, like when people ask me your birthday, I'm like, I don't know. Same. Which of these 1900s tanks were designed and built before the others? The Renault FT, the Panzer IV, or IV, Cromwell, or the M4 Sherman? Which of these was <laughs> built first, essentially? Um, Willis Major asked, what is a ruminated gut? It's an oxymoron that we came up with on this stream. Where you are thinking about something, but you make an immediate decision. It doesn't make any sense, like most of the stuff that no, we No, no, no. It does make sense. I'm going to, I will define it better than you just did. So your gut instinct, when we refer to that, it's when you make a decision, right? In the moment, boom. You, th you have something formed. You have an opinion formed. <laughs> Paul. But then a ruminated gut is you take what you formed as your answer. You sit on it for some time. It grows. It either 
is what you felt and it is still your gut feeling or it's maybe moved to something else. So your ruminated gut is your long gut. It's like your gut feeling, but like what happens a couple of days, weeks, months. It's after the full digestive feeling. system. Yeah, exactly. The answer is the Renault FT is the very first one of these, which was the least picked. The most picked was the M4 Sherman. I picked the M4 Shamalam. Yeah, it's like a gut decision, but it's the it's the most long term effects of the gut decision. Like when I, as an example, I absolutely loathe this wine when I first started drinking it. That was my gut, and now I loathe it a little less. So it's like a little bit like my ruminated gut. Yeah, I'm doing, short term. I'm doing really bad. So next up, we have last question. Thank the God. The Thirty Years War ended with which treaty? The Peace of Westphalia, the Treaty of Paris, the Peace of Prague, or the Treaty of Versailles. The Thirty Years War ended with which treaty? <laughs> Chrissy, exactly. I think next is TV show, so maybe we might have like a more. I'm gonna pick this one. Ah, <laughs> this said, I thought it was a medical condition. LOL. <laughs> I'm dead. That's too funny. Could be. Um, I will also, I'm going to state this publicly. Chris is the one who picked all of these. Not the questions, but the categories and the no. difficulties. Mm -hmm. Let, Elias, mm -hmm. I said pick computers. And then you looked at the questions. You're like, no, no, nobody's going to like these. And then I said pick, pick mathematics. And you said, no, nobody's going to like these. And so then what am I left with? We have literal historians on here who still don't know the answers to this. So imagine if I we didn't pick the, the levels. Ones. I picked the topics. You picked the levels. The answer was the Peace of Westphalia. I picked Treaty of Paris. Wow, Treaty of Versailles. Many people pick. No, one no picked I think Peace that was Prague. World War One. By the way, no? I'm, I'm just joking about credit. Like I very much was involved with the decision making in this. I just basically I'm the one who was like, hey, should we do this? And Chris is like, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, uh, that's literally the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Which of the following answers will you guess wrong? It's always wise to guess a certain treaty's name. Oh, I'm so excited. Who has won this absolutely ridiculous question? Whoever won it Let's earned see. it. Let's see. Justina wants us to do mathematics next time. Let us see who the results are. Imposter Steve. Stop it right now. Oh, wow. He is. Stop a, it. You're a historian. A historian. An historian, as others would say. So we got imposter Steve. I'm telling you, Wendy is always up there. Wendy, you know your stuff. One history. So you tell us what you want. Oh, an art category would be fun. Is there an art category? I got to take a look. There's a lot. What I could actually, you know what I could do next time when we do a trivia night? I could post the uh, the list of what's available and everyone can vote on it somehow. I can figure that out. But that's probably, that would probably be best. That's what I think. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Yeah. Steve, button or magnet? Button or magnet? So, Imposter Steve, Brittany Peanut, Wendy... Pacific Ocean Plant and Chrissy were our top five. And I will say this was one of the first ones where the first place to second place was significantly different compared to the other ones. So, Steve, you really did well. Yeah, you did well. You did a great job. That was friggin' awesome. Good, good job. Did you give it? And did you give an answer? Awesome that it is over now. <laughs> and the next <laughs> one we have is TV on hard. Magnet. Steve is going for a magnet. Okay, last one. We have a last. Do we have anything else? Oh, and then we'll have the giveaway for the patch. Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. We are starting qu uh, quiz number three. So get ready. Do what you need to do. Oh, uh -oh. Cheddar is going at it with Raisin right now. Look at this. Look at this. Cheddar. <laughs> Cheddar, that's not so nice. Cheddar. All right, here we go. Look at his little Trivia tail. night three. We are doing another one. Yep, this is what we promised. Three quizzes, we're doing them. We're doing them all. So Imposter Steve knows geography and history. Wendy said, I, re I read a lot, just not history. Sam said, I might win that one, LOL. I'll say Magnet, thank you. Great. All right, so we are going to start 
the TV one, and this one is a hard level one. Again, I did not question any, or I did not vet any of these questions. Look at Bernie. There's just a train of muskrats that are happening here on this here night. <laughs> we move one thing, and it's like all the cats are here tonight. Oh, Chrissy said I love quiz night. That's so, so sweet. I think it's a blast. All right, next up we have what is Dr. Doofenshmirtz's first name? Is it Hank, Hunt, what? Heidi, or Heinz? Dr. Doofenshmirtz's first name is what Hank, the actual frick? Hans, Heidi, or Heinz? This is n- not even a question. I don't even know what you're saying. I'm dead. This is too funny. Do you know this? I do not. I think I know. It's like I want to say that I know he's from. I'm just going to wait a second longer before I state what I want to state. I've never heard of a Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Okay, I'm going to reveal the answer. But before I do, I think that he's an animated cartoon character. And I think that I wouldn't have... Yes, this is... Yeah, I knew it. This is who it is. From Phineas and Ferb. I've never heard of any yeah, of these things yeah, that yeah. You, you're I saying. Knew it. I knew it. Okay, well... I Bob, wouldn't have known Heinz, but I've heard of Dr. Doofenshmirtz, for sure. Many of you picked Hans. I picked Hans. Buckle up, folks. This is hard. So whoever wins this is going to... So Jen is saying my vote is sports next time. Listen, I also don't disagree. I mean, the, the swing the pendulum the other way. Yeah, if we don't know anything that we're doing right now in like like history and this and TV, like what's I'm going to say sports, whoever you know? wins this one is going to get it because this is hard, hard level. I'm going to give a magnet and a button to you. You don't have to pick. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, next question is number two. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Was what in that show? What was the name of Frank's wrestling persona? Was it the Maniac, the Trash Man, Dayman, or Bird of War? We are looking for the name of Frank's wrestling persona in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I will say what? that I did not know the answer to this. Did you? I mean, I know the show. I know who's oh, in it. Look, what? What happened? Good job. Oh, I'm gonna win the button and the magnet. Mm-hmm. You're gonna keep them. You're gonna I'm burn gonna them em. in front of everyone. Mm-hmm. No, I'm gonna put them in a shredder. Mm, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I. We don't what? need more greenhouse gases. Let's just shred it. <laughs> I'm just going to bow out on this one. I got my win. No, Imposter Sleep, stick around. Do it. Do it. Do it. I just want, I think the competition is fun. Chrissy said, I watch mostly sports, so I'll probably suck at this TV show trivia. I'm going to write sports in the book just because I think I want to do a sports one. I'm going to be great in it. That would be a ton of fun. Like, just make it. Look, we know, t- know TV, and we know, like, you, f- I feel like, are better at history than I am. And we still didn't know anything. The trash man was the answer. I got it. I knew the trash man. Yeah. JJ, you said I did the same. Make it fair. Oh, that is sweet of you both. But like, play. Who cares? Our rule is, by the way, that the same person can't win in the trivia more than once. However, it's fun to just make other people sweat a little bit. Yeah, make them work for that win. Why what why is this the one I'm doing well on? <laughs> okay, next up we have In Star Trek, what is the name of Spock's father? Is it Sarek? Is it Tuvik? Sirak or Tipal? Tipak. Tupac. Nothing. I didn't hear a word you said. I said Tupac. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, Deb asks, Elisa, are you reading the answers in the order you see them? Because it's not in the order I see them on my phone. I or think the it screen. shuffles I'm driving them. my OCD crazy. Yeah, it shuffles it for everyone. Everyone gets a shuffled answer just to keep it even for if people are next to each other and they see them click a certain space. You know, it's one of those things. I got this one right. The answer is 
Sarek, and I apologize if I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. I don't really know Star Trek as well as I know my Star Wars. My Star Wars is that like when you refer to my soaps? Mm-hmm. Oh, I used to <laughs> love the soaps. Me and my mom. I never watched them. So how did my mom like? My mom must have known things. Oh, she I wish I loved going shopping with her. I loved helping her with her arts and crafts. And she had two boys, and she really wanted a girl. And she's mm-hmm. just like, I'm gonna just take what I can get. And, uh, nur- what is it? Nurture versus nature. She was like, I'm nurturing the shit out of this. Yeah, let's I'm watch our. Let's this. go watch our soaps. Yeah. Oh, I when I if I was home for like the flu, I would we I would catch up on all of days of our lives i would know all the characters and i'd wait for the stories and then i'd have her recap to me what would happen i mean come on i never you know? never i was more of a gilligan's island person they are literally not the same days of our lives is an everyday occurrence no gilligan's- next question is which of these is in the star trek wait i'm sorry which of these in the star trek series is not klingon food racht or d'oeuvres gag or blood wine I think there's an answer here that I'm going to just go for. What in the world am I even read, reading? Racht, hors d'oeuvres, gag, and blood wine. Ah. You know what this is, Chris? Blood wine. This is blood wine. Yeah. I oh, think this, think is this more... helps us with V rising. I think this is more wine blood than blood wine. Blood wine has like a branding aspect yeah. to it. This is just. Yeah, I agree. They had extra and they're just, it's wine blood. Pronouncing rock pretty well too. Great. The answer is hors d'oeuvres. Those are the little finger foods that we no, have here. No, they're the apps, nice appetizers. Like, also known as finger food. Well, yeah, yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll let it, I'll, I'll let it slide. Thank you. Um, next question we have. This is question five. You chat up the same way. Star Trek is the TV show form of Harry Potter to books and movies with <laughs> Harry Potter. I really should watch Star Trek, but I don't even know where to begin. That's a whole other debate or conversation. Next question is, in Star Trek, Jesus, holy McMoley, who was the founder of the Klingon Empire and its philosophy? Was it Moeller, the Unforgiving, Kallus, the Unforgettable, Dahar, Master Kor, or Lady Lucara of the Great Hall? Those are a lot of consonants and vowels that I've never said before in my life in that order. Lady Luconico? Lady Lucara of the Great Hall, or Kallus the Unforgettable, or Dahar Master Kor, or Moeller the Unforgiving. Who is it? Is it a gimme? Kitty, Kitty San, San says. says so, think so. I don't know. I guess. Oh, Kitty San was married to a trucker, though. So that that's probably where the. Oh, gimme I is. got it. Good job. The answer is. Kales the Unforgettable or Kales, I don't know. Probably Kales. I think I like Lady Luconico though. Do you know that you can't swallow your tongue? What do you mean? <laughs> Why? Do you want me to try? <laughs> no, because there's there's a thought. My mom used to have this if people have like a seizure or they fall down and like they seize that like you're supposed to put your finger in your mouth to like hold their tongue from being swallowed. It is impossible. No one has ever gotten their sw- their tongue swallowed. Don't. The reason I'm thinking that is because my tongue is so dry right now from this wine that I'm worried I'm going to swallow it. Don't tempt me. I'll try it. Question six is. I love a good challenge. Which race enjoys a glass of warm boggle in Star Trek? Vulcan, human, Klingon, or Batha? And I promise you folks, the next time I do this, I will not assume these questions are random. I will vet them because this is out of control that this is the fifth freaking Star Trek question. (laughs) Question seven. What is the best TV show ever? Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, or Star Trek? (laughs) Unbelievable. Oh, wait. I think that. Oh, crap. I think this is a language. Which one did you pick? Oh, well, it's no, major. Vulcan is a, a uh, language. Yeah. And isn't Batha Star Wars? Yeah. That's what I think. Ah, Willis Major, thanks I, for following. Yeah, thanks for following, Welcome. Willis Major. We also have a Discord if you're interested in seeing all the n- ridiculousness that goes on there, which is not ridiculous. It's a lot of really wonderful stuff. 
You can but type ridiculous can be wonderful. Thank you, Kara. Yeah, yes. That's really what I meant. The answer is Klingon. Many of you wrote Vulcan. Next question is... Paramere said, oh, just Steve is happy. This episode of Trivia is brought to you by Harry Potter and Star Trek. And I'm- No, Chrissy, I should make that. Okay, next question. Next question. Jesus Christ. In Star Trek, what sauce is commonly used by <laughs> Klingons <you> on Bridget <laughs> Lung? Sweet chili sauce, grapak sauce, gazor pazor pudding, grapork sauce. What am I saying? <laughs> I'm breaking my microphone. What are these words? What is going on? Gestapo sauce and also garbanzo bean pudding and uh, pe- peach tree, peach tree dishes. <laughs> I am telling you, I'm going to lose my mind. This is stupid. Stupid. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm picking. It No, Chrissy, I, this is at this point I will not forget. But I will write it in. I'm dead. Shorepam said Elias, you speak Klingon. Thank you. Garpork? Garpok. I'm telling you folks, I'm real good with my uh diction. Garzorpazgor. Gazorpazorp. <laughs> That's what it is. Gazorpazorp pudding. Wait, um, Gazorpazorp is from uh Rick and Morty. That's probably the joke then. Gazorpazorb. Grapak sauce is the one that m- nearly all of you got. Grapak sauce is, yeah. I mean, this is, I would get this at McDonald's with my nuggets. Here we go. Next one up is in 2008, British celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay believes he almost died after suffering what accident in Iceland while filming? He slipped is on Gazorpazorb. Um, a minor car accident in a snowstorm being served undercooked chicken at his hotel, slipping off a cliff and nearly drowning in icy water, or crash landing when arriving at Keflav- Kl- Keflavik Airport. Kefluffer. Oh my god, I just want this quiz to be over because I do not want to have to say any more Star Trek or speak Gazorp Azorp anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, Mare Mare. Apparently, I picked Star Trek trivia. Listen, I want to be honest. I am not hating on Star Trek. I'm sure that Star Trek has provided a lot of joy for many folks, and I'm here for that. No, we. I'm love- just annoyed that this is what it's come down to tonight on this stupid hard quiz. Meanwhile, in history medium, who knows when the the whatever debacle of oh, Justina whatever was. wants to do a culinary quiz. She would nail it. <sighs> That would be really fun. <laughs> Bjork, Bjork. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what a culinary quiz means. I mean, it's just like, you, know, you know us. You think would, we'll win? No, she would. it would be like, what is... I'm writing it in the book, though, so we know. Julia Child's first meal ever made. The answer was slipping in, uh, off a cliff and nearly drowning in icy water. Oh, really? I thought yeah. it was chicken. That's what everyone picked, the majority. I feel like it was related. But maybe that was the that was a trick. Deb, are you serious? Gordon Ramsay's gonna going vegan. Is he really? Wow! I can tell Swiss chard from kale. I can do it. I know what it is. Absolutely, I got the answer to that one. I could totally tell Swiss chard from from kale. All right, ready? Here we Swiss go. Swiss chard has bigger leaves, and then yeah. you have the little crinklies in the kale. Which former Car- uh, Coronation Street actress was once a hostess on the British game show Double Your Money? Was it Amanda Barry, Violet Carson, Sue Nichols, or Jean Alexander? Hmm. Violet Chachki. A Saturday morning cartoons quiz. Listen, folks, you're all giving us gold. Oh, Paul said that we have a muskrat meals where we couldn't. So maybe we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. I got this one wrong. Oh, this is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Um, it, Queen Wolf, if you like Saturday morning cartoons, um, you should watch uh, the newest Rescue Rangers on Disney+. Plus. It's like... It's Very a fun. great throwback. It's real fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. The answer was Amanda Barry. This is definitely a UK show. I thought she was um, the one who went crazy and then like... Amanda Bynes? She got face tattoos and everything? No. I don't think that's Amanda Bynes. No, she did. <laughs> Amanda Bynes did not get face tattoos. She did. 
Amanda, you're telling me Amanda Bynes has a face tattoo? Yes. Oh, this is <sighs> I. She has a heart on her cheek. Ooh, mm. I didn't know that. Uh, okay, next up, last question of the night is in the show Doctor Who. What is the name of the time capsule model stolen by the Doctor? TT Type Forty. Oh, so it's the. Oh, I don't know. You have to read them all. TT Type One Mark Five. TT Type One Mark Three. TT Type Forty Mark Three. Tardis. Yeah, Tardis is the same on all of them. No, but I need you to read all of it. TT Type 40 Mark 5 TARDIS, TT Type 1 Mark 5 TARDIS, TT Type 1 Mark 3 TARDIS, TT Type 40 Mark 3 TARDIS. <laughs> Thank you. Now I can answer. Wow. <laughs> oh, Scarcase Scar said and she's trying to remove it. Think the winner of this quiz will have a negative score. Ha ha. Yeah, Queen Wolf, really, I was debating that. Legitimately. Wait, how do I have a positive score? Oh, you're about to win. I Let just... E who the F cares. I'm dead. We have a winner. Let's reveal the winner now. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I jumped the gun. Uh the fewest votes were for the winner, which was TT type 40 Mark III TARDIS. Clearly, I mean, Obby. Obby. so the next up we have is the winner and the winner of this evening. Oh, I hope it's final, me. I hope it's me. Final quiz is. Let's see. Sending to players. Yep. Show final. Here we go. Here we go. Ready, I want to see. I want to see. Ready? Ready? Wendy, you're the oh, winner. Crap. Wow. And the next person up was Mozzie. And that was I many was, points away. I was up there. Look, I was so we have Wendy, Mozzie, Patsy, Sam, Chris, who we're gonna remove because he doesn't count. I Jen, count. You do count, but you wouldn't win yourself. So Jen, so those are the top five. We had a we had top fives in each category all over the place. Wendy, you I know am some very impressed. Wendy v knows impressed. some shit. Very good job, everyone. And Wendy, you are getting a magnet and a button. Congratulations. That's crazy. Wendy is super smart. Um, okay. And I'm she right. speaks Klingon. Yep. Vulcan. Wait, Klingon or Vulcan? Klingon. I don't know. And I apparently speak it well, too. Yeah. Um. So now at this point, Chris, go ahead and start the raffle. This is now the final giveaway for the night. Oh, which my is God. We're raffle. giving away the kitchen sink. The raffle right now is going to be open to everyone. And it is anyone who's watching. If you type in exclamation raffle, you can be put into a raffle to win this smart um, custom patch. What's his name? Dexter. Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. Uh, we don't know if it's his nose or his uh, mouth or his mouth or mouth or mouth. Mouth. Mose. Wait. What if you? it's a beak and an a beak and a nose is a beak a nose or a mouth what is it no a beak is a mouth the nose is the nostrils are on the beak but exactly is a mean? is a beak a nose or a mouth chris what are you talking about if the if the nostrils are on the beak is it a nose or a mouth is your car a window or a car I don't know. Your car, <laughs> your car is a car and it has windows on the car. A beak is a mouth and it has nostril holes on the mouth. But then where's the then it doesn't have a nose. What are you talking about? You would say about? then that my car doesn't have a <laughs> No. I'm telling you. I think that it's Abs I will follow you to the the Mayans end it's, of the world. Yeah, it's Bolt. It's mm -mm. a no. Everybody's saying it's Bolt. Mm -mm. When is a car not a car? When it turns into a driveway. <laughs> Look at oh, the short sex Pam is conversation on. between short Pam is on it tonight. <laughs> Listen, what I've... Deb? You have this fight all the time. What are you even talking about? This is a fight people have. Wow. I feel like we're like we're brought into the fold. We are 
best friends with everybody here that were I, included in this. I am on the side that I will say that they and me and Deb, we we've connected. We have a tight relationship twinning. I do not think that birds' beaks are their noses. Birds' beaks are their mouths, and there are nostril holes on the mouth. I know that I had a bird for 13 years. Bird. I know what it, what happens. I know it. Yeah. But I'm saying that Voldemort doesn't have a nose, but he can still breathe because he has nostrils. What are the lips then? His mouth. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss something in biology class? Cats don't have beaks, weirdo. Who says that cats have beaks? Cats have beaks? <laughs> OG Steve thinks cats have Mozambique. beaks. Mozambique. That wait, what is we're saying different different things right now. Elias and Chris Deb and I battle all the time about beaks. I'm literally Dad, what are you even talking? That's what Who I'm battles saying. battles about beaks? I'm saying it's a very fair question. I don't think that... Expert level. <laughs> I think that a beak is a nose and a mouth. Cats don't have beaks. Birds don't have noses, per se. Their beak has nostrils on it. Just but then full stop. Also... Becky Dunn. Raisin's nose is on his mouth. So then is it is does he have a beak? Raisin's nose is not on his mouth. That's it like you is. said your nose is on your mouth. Do we have beaks? <laughs> <laughs> is it time to pick a winner? <laughs> This is we literally battle bonkers. about beaks. What I a great freaking bet. week this has been. Abishi, I sent you <laughs> I sent you a thing in uh in uh Pikmin. We were up in uh this trail, stairway to heaven, and uh what wherever we were, remember I showed you that garden center thing? And I said, Is oh, is this where the hot dogs are <laughs> sold? <laughs> And so Every, I sent the Bishi a little postcard. Night Viper saying the wine is getting better, LOL. Justina said, Chris, put the wine down in the way, please. <laughs> Deb, I'm telling you. Oh, twins. my God. Shelly said tomorrow is National Cheese Day. I, it just keeps getting better. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't know. We can't. It's only oh, downhill from here. Queen Wolf is opening up a can of worms. <laughs> and what do turtles have, LOL? Oh. I don't want to go there. We're, we'll save that oh. for another night. I don't know. I don't know that I can process <laughs> that right now. OG Steve stands with Chris. I and think they have Dab beaks. stands with me. No, I tell me, convince me why they don't have beaks. <laughs> Turtles have beaks. Do you know I was very proud of myself the one day when I saved the turtle? Don't deflect. <laughs> I saved the turtle. In the mid, a snapping turtle when I was on my bike ride about a year ago. With I the may police. have talked about this with yeah. the policeman. Mm -hmm. And I probably could have handled it better than the police did, but I stopped and I diverted traffic and I made sure that I saw someone to like help me. And we moved a snapping turtle outside of the middle of the road that it would have gotten crushed and Aww. saved it. Yeah. I'm I'm with I'm with nature. I'm with You animals. are with nature, but Ted, tell me then, does it have a beak or not? <laughs> Pick a winner. <laughs> Okay. This is one of our longer streams and, and I it, it has been a total blast. Thank you folks for hanging out with us. I mean, we had an amazing week and you just literally are cherry on top of it. Yeah, just I did hanging out with you. Yeah, fun times. Okay, here we go. Who is smart tonight? <laughs> Not me. Kathy, congratulations. Congratulations. Kathy. You are you, the winner of the smart patch. Smart period. Smart Is it? Yeah, it's a period. Kathy? Yeah. Oh, I wanted it to That's be a perfect. little snarky. That's I mean, he's snarky. snarky with his beak, beak, mouth, nose, no, no, noth, mouth, 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 mows, mows, beak, and beak. <laughs> 
Um, before we go, folks, there's actually an update to the schedule, and I meant to talk about this earlier today when more folks were on, and I forgot. But um, there are some changes that are going to have to happen. Do you have for Kathy our... in the book? Yes. Okay, thanks. There are some changes that are going to have to happen leading up to our 200th episode, and there's a couple of reasons why, and I'm going to go through it really, really quick with you. My concert date has been moved endlessly around because of a million things that are going on at the school and a lot of miscommunication. And currently speaking, my concert date is going to happen at a time where I will not be prepared to do what I want to do for episode 200, which is supposedly going to be next Saturday. That's what we initially planned to do with our 200th episode, big, huge celebration, lots of uh, videos and all sorts of content that we wanted to do. That will not happen next Saturday. What will happen next Saturday in place of that is going to be drag bingo. So we've collectively raised Bambi points. We put this out there a long time ago. And for anyone who's interested, we will have some sort of like Zoom link or whatever and have some sort of drag bingo scenario involved. Drag will be me. I will be the host of this bingo session that everyone can participate in. We've done this before. Um, me and Chris have been a part of something before where someone It's has a lot it. of fun. And it's a lot of fun. Look, I'm not going to be as fun as the drag queen was on that we had. You but- never know. Never know. But the point is, everyone who joins that will be able to participate in the drag bingo. And then if you get a digital card, you win, you win, you get some prizes, whatever. That's going to happen next Saturday. Um, the following Saturday will be our 200th episode. But to get there, to make it 200, we're going to probably, I think we said, me and you, Chris, said that Wednesday, I'm sorry, Tuesday of that following week, the 14th, that's my concert day. I can't be here to stream. So we're not going to stream on that day. We're going to stream on Friday and Saturday. Friday will be 199. Saturday will be 200. And then the week prior. Wait, so Sam is asking she needs to be off for 200. So she just wants to know when. Officially, it will be the 18th. We're going to post it on um, Instagram too. Yeah, I'm going to make a little calendar so you could see. But that. That Saturday following the the initial date of 11th, the following Saturday will be our 200th. And and the, the thing is, Saturday of the 11th, we are still going to be with you all. We're just not necessarily streaming. We're going to just do a Zoom call, a Zoom call, drag bingo an hour, have fun, laugh, do what we do, whatever. So there won't be a stream on that day, but we're still going to hang out. The following week, that will be the 200th episode. Yes. I think, yeah, June 18th is 200. Yes. I apologize if this is, oh my God, Gary's housewarming is June 18th. FML, I'm so sorry. Listen, I knew this was going to cause some uh, some chaos for some folks. I apologize. It's the way the schedule has landed for me at my job and what is happening is preventing me from doing the things that I want to happen. That's I mean, really the bottom line. I mean, you just line. need to quit the job. and Clearly, you know. Now we have to change the dates on the, all the balloons. Oh, my God, I'm dead. Um, awesome, Sam. That's great. Perfect. <laughs> I was worried. I was worried that you were going to have uh, conflict with work. Devil's Advocate, why wouldn't you stream bingo? Is that a bishi? Uh, mainly because of the way that um, what we the, the, the plan was, the initial plan of it was uh, the Zoom like call face, with bingo. Face like to face. face. Face to face. That's why. And um, with streaming, it's obviously not going to work that way. So. Um, Heidi said, I have no life. So really anytime is fine. That, so Heidi, this answer, <laughs> I hope this answers your question because I know you had said, um, when are we going to do that extra episode? Now that we're stretching it down to like a week more, there will be no extra episode. It will be, um, in fact, fewer, <coughs> fewer episodes by fewer by one. The Tuesday we won't stream, yeah. which is the 14th. Yeah. The Saturday we won't stream, which is the bingo, the drag bingo. Right. And that's it. I will post this. I will try to keep everyone abreast of the situation. And I was listening to our podcast. I said abreast 14 times. You love it. Yeah. It's the chicken cutlets. I know. Which anyway, Gordon Ramsay didn't die eating. He um, almost died falling off of a cliff into ice water. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm, I'm joking on this super dry wine. I have to go. Folks, 
Thanks for tuning in to a remarkable night. I really had so much fun hanging out with you all. And I am absolutely here for uh, for this. And I hope that you enjoyed yourselves and you enjoyed trivia. I wrote down all of these wonderful requests you all have. I can't promise that I'm going to get to them all like by the next trivia. But at some point, hopefully we'll get to them. Um, the muskrats are absolutely rioting yeah, at this, this point. Yeah, this is a late stream. Uh, but... My throat sphincter is, in fact, closing. Um, and... <laughs> And tomorrow we will be streaming and we may be streaming from some other location. We'll see. I'm not promising anything, but you'll have you'll to have tune, to tune in, in to, to find, find out. out. So I hope you all had a good night and uh, we'll see you all soon. Have a good night, folks. And thanks for tuning in to another episode of Airstreamers. Bye. Bye, everyone.